Alrighty, everyone, welcome to our new playthrough, which was highly anticipated. This is Pokemon X. Obama Jesus Christ, that was the worst intro ever to a playthrough, especially a new one we've started, and you always give Joe and I shit for our intros. But anyway, welcome everyone to the Kalos region in our newest playthrough of Pokemon X. Yeah, we're super excited to be here, everyone. And if you're all wondering what happened to our Pokemon Violet series, well, we made a poll a couple days ago on our channel explaining that the Violet file got corrupted. Yeah, sadly we lost all our save data in that game and for now won't be returning to it, but from the poll we made in a community post about which game you'd all like to see us play next, Pokemon X and why we're the most popular, so here we are. This game is better anyways, boys. But if you enjoyed this video, then please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you know when the next episode from this series will be out. Now it's time to get this game started. That's right, Donnie, let's get this game going. And it's actually my turn to play, since Donald started playing Violet before went to shit. But anyway, I chose the boy character and the middle one out of the three, so there's no arguments between us about how our player should look. All right, since we ditched Fletching in our Pokemon Omega Ruby playthrough boys, we have to use it in this game. And we're using Froki too, just because it's the goat. Hey, I haven't played this game before, Obama, so you two are gonna need to help me out here. But that intro was probably one of the best in any game we've played so far. The animations here already look 10 times better than Violet El Mao. This game is 10 times better. That's why, Joe, now head to that mirror first and get changed out of your PJs so we can get our starter. That's all I care about right now. Oh yeah, the second most popular game on our poll was Pokemon Black and White 2, so that shall be the next game we play and then we'll take it from there. But I am so looking forward to exploring this new region with my two buddies and a bunch of Gen 6 Pokemon too. Well, look what we have here. Our mom is a solid 10 in this game too, boys. This is something that never changes no matter how shit the game is, El Mao. Okay, well, one thing I absolutely dislike is the interior of our house, holy hell. It's tiny. Agreed, Joe, but luckily enough, we never have to return here again after saying bye to our mom, but check it, boys, more sweet animations. And this is where we get introduced to two of our newest friends. Yeah, this is Serena and Shauna, another pair of hotties, El Mao. Obama, you're really thirsty today, huh, LMFAO? And look, Joe, our house is so tiny, they made that poor Rhyhorn stay outside in the cold, wet French weather, wee oui, wee. Oui. Tu as raison, Donald. C.E. pauvre Rhyhorn va galère de hor. Joe, what in the actual fuck was that? That was my attempt at speaking French, Donald. Since Kalos is based off France, I thought I'd show off some of my French language skills. Okay, well, do me and everyone a favor, Joe, and never say anything in French again. I loved your French, Joe, so ignore what that fat whale lord says. And anyway, we've made it to the plaza of Vanneville Town, where we're going to get our starter Pokemon, boys. Yeah, and since we're going to pick Froki, I say we resurrect our beloved Greninja's name from our Omega Ruby playthrough and nickname this Froki Hanzo. Joe, that's the smartest thing you've said since this entire playthrough started. I hope you understand that, but yeah, I know I'm not going to be happy with this Froki right off the bat. Before I ask why Donald, look, they all want to give us a nickname of our own. Well, there's absolutely nothing little about any of us three, so I'm going to pick Big T as our nickname, boys. Good shout, Joe. I am definitely a big kind of fellow known as the Big D around these here parts, El Mal. All righty, boys, here we go. Time to choose the Pokemon which will carry us through this region and make us the champion of Kalos 2. Although everyone knows what we'll be picking, so this is quite underwhelming. Yeah, it's probably written in the Bible that not using a Froki in Pokemon X and Y is a sin, and you'll go to hell for it. But anyway, like I said earlier, Obama, this Froki will need a little upgrade. <laughs> Maybe keep the laughing to a minimum, Donald, before you choke yourself to death. Shut up, Joe. I'm still fit as a fiddle. And anyway, now that we've got our starter Pokemon and Pokedex, it's time to head out on our new journey. And by the way, Obama, we have to use Xerneas in this game for our team, so make sure Joe gets the memo and doesn't forget. Oh yeah, so we're playing Pokemon X since we couldn't get Y, but regardless, two of our members are gonna be Xerneas and Bulbasaur since we already use Charizard and Omega Ruby. But the other three members of our team, we shall leave to you guys, our viewers, to decide. Yeah, fine by me, boys. It's been a while since I used Bulbasaur. Actually, I don't think I've ever used one, so this will be fun. And what's this about Froki needing an upgrade, Donald? 
Don't you worry about that, Joe. Just focus on winning your first battle here with Shauna. And if you lose, you're a moron because we have the type advantage here. Yeah, and I already have Bubble on our Froakie too. This is like the first time in a game when we get a move which is the same type as our starter, so this battle will be a cakewalk. Talking about being a cakewalk, this game has been renowned to be one of the easiest in the series, but we still like it, so I hope you all enjoy it too. And anyway, we need to beat this game so we can say we conquered all the regions in Pokemon. Right, that's Shauna dealt with boys, and I also leveled up too. It seems Serena might be the one to give us more of a challenge, but I'm just wondering. Will the other two battle us as well? The big one and that small boy with the ginger hair. That's Tierno and Trevor Joe. I can't remember if we ever get to battle them since it's been a few years since I played, but what makes me happy about this game is we have more than one friend who travels on the journey with us. Yeah, I like that we have a whole squad who travels the land of Kalos with us, Donald. It makes it feel like the game's more immersive since we can actually talk to more people, and this game feels more alive. So if we go off the anime boys, our mom is a Rhyhorn racer, and that's why she walks around in overalls, but it would have been cool if there was a mini game where we got to race Rhyhorn in this game. Oh, that's a shame they didn't have mini games like that in Pokemon X and Y Obama. But anyway, I said bye to our mom, and it's time to head to the first town in Kalos. Yeah, finally we can leave this shithole village place. I feel so claustrophobic just walking around in Vanneville town, Jesus Christ. Well, at least the buildings and trees aren't glitching out like they did in Paldea LMAO. But anyway, I'm gonna get PTSD if I keep thinking about Violet, so let's get on with our journey. Look, guys, that was so sweet. Our mom's rye horn was saying bye to us like it knew we're leaving forever, never to return to this place. Joe, literally no one cares now. I hope that moron hiker person standing next to the bridge will finally let us cross it and not tell us to go say bye bye to anyone else. Don't worry, Donald, he's just telling us that wild Pokemon will pop out of the grass if we walk in it, and to be careful not to get killed by them, I guess. Oh, look, boys, the first wild Pokemon of our Pokemon X playthrough. I wonder what new Pokemon we will see. A fucking Pidgey, are you serious? So Game Freak went and made a bunch of new Pokemon for this game, but the first one we come across is this Gen 1 bird. Well, this game has Pokemon from other regions too, Donald, but yeah, maybe it's random and we just got unlucky to find this Pokemon first, or maybe this battle is a scripted one, I don't know to be honest. Well, even though Pidgeot is amazing and even has a mega evolution, we won't be using one in this playthrough since I really want to use the new Pokemon from Kalos. Oh, look, boys, I caught up with Serena and Shauna. It seems they were waiting for us. It's just a dumb Pokemon catching tutorial, Joe, nothing special. At this point, they should have implemented an option to skip these dumb tutorials. Hey, Serena has a Fletchling of her own. Now, I really want to have one on our team, boys, because then we can have head-to-head -head battles with her and see who has the stronger bird, El Mao. Well, I really want to have a strong dragon type on our team, Obama. We always need a dragon type in our playthrough because they're just the best. But I don't want to use Garchomp since we already used one in our Pokemon Platinum playthrough. Hey, she caught that bunny. I think we should use one of those boys because I love bunnies and that one is a ground type too. Bunnelby is okay, Joe, but I wouldn't say it's gonna suit our team. We can find better options that you'll like more than that bunny. Look what Shauna is saying here, boys. She's amazed that the Pokemon Serena just caught went inside that Pokeball even though she has a Fennekin that also goes into a Pokeball. What a dumbass, seriously. Okay, well now we know which friend of ours has a few screws loose, don't we, Obama? Yeah, don't we, Obama Lamau? I feel like that was a shot at me, Donald, but I'm also not sure either. So I'm gonna say you weren't talking about me. Wow, Joe, sometimes your innocence is adorable and also insufferable, but anyway, I was thinking we could use an Aurorus too. We use Tyrantrum and Omega Ruby, so I think it's only fitting we use Aurorus in this game. But ice types are so weak and shit, Obama. That Aurorus will die so much, and with Joe playing, it won't even last one turn in a battle. I think you need to rethink your ideas, bro. Well, Donald, you haven't exactly provided the group with any suggestions, so how about you participate more, you moron? My ideas are way superior than yours, Obama. And if your tiny pea-sized brain can't comprehend my greatness, then whose fault is that? Well, a viewer pointed out to me, Donald, that you two had PTSD and struggled with your champion battles whilst I absolutely destroyed Steven when I battled him. So what does that tell you? Well, that tells me you had a piss-easy game, Obama, and also whoever that viewer was, is incredibly rude. Are they a psychologist? No, they are not. So how dare they give an assessment on my mental stability? We don't need a psychologist to get your mental health assessment, Donald LMAO. 
Joe, why don't you shut the fuck up and just battle this little punk with his shitty little zigzagoon? I'm not in the mood for your sass today, buddy. It feels like we're in Hoenn with the amount of Pokemon we've seen from that region, don't you think, boys? Why aren't we encountering many Pokemon from Kalos like we should be? Well, Obama, I can tell no, you, you why, No, you will actually. not, Joe, because I want to be the one to show off my Pokemon knowledge skills. You're just having a meltdown, Donald, as usual, since my comebacks have grown over the months and are now on par with yours. Can one of you just please answer my question? Well, Obama, what I've noticed is over the years, with each game they've gone and made less Pokemon, well, at least for X and Y, they didn't make as many, but in Scarlet and Violet, they made more, I think. But anyway, to balance the reduced amount of Pokemon in each game, they went and added older gen Pokemon in this game. Wow, that actually makes a lot of sense, Donald. But anyways, check it out, guys. I have made it to the first major location of the game, if you can call it that. And I love how all our friends are here with us walking together. Nice Shauna gave us a paralyzed heal, boys. She may be quite useful after all, Donald, don't you think? Yeah, well, she's still shit at Pokemon battles, Obama. I wish they would make the friend battles more tough. I mean, even Wally was more difficult than these losers. LML. Oh, look, one of the new bug type Pokemon in this game, boys. This little guy is a scatterbug, and I think he evolves into Vivian, which can be all different colors. In my Pokemon home storage, I actually have caught all the colors of Vivian Joe, and also I've caught all the Alcremi versions as well. I even got a shiny stamped Sinistee. No one likes to show off Obama, and guys, did you just hear that Pikachu? It's the only Pokemon in this game which makes a noise like in the anime when it talks. And of course, they'd only make Pikachu have that effect. Well, Donald, what do you expect? Pikachu is the literal mascot of the Pokemon company, but I want to hear more about what your opinion is on the best rival in any of the game. I'm glad you asked me, Joe, because it's obviously Blue. He's just the best, and it's not even a competition. Yeah, I second that, Donald. Leave a comment down below telling us who your favorite rival in any of the games is. Lyra is the worst too, by the way. OMG, here is Pikachu again. What's with these trainers not using any of the new Pokemon? This is so dumb. Well, we're gonna be in big trouble here, Joe, if that thing uses Shockwave or something like that. Let's hope you can try kill this thing before it kills us. If I lose to this level five piece of poo Pikachu, you have permission to bully me for the rest of my life and also in every other life too, Donald Elamau. I think we're good, Joe. This guy is just using stat-based moves, so one more shot from you should give us the win. But knowing our luck, this trainer probably has a full restore or hyper potion on her LML. Hey, that reminds me, the first gym, which is in the town we're heading to, by the way, is a bug-type gym. And I think we should try catch something here, Joe, since Froakie will struggle there right now. Okay, but what if I train Froakie all the way up to level 16 so it evolves, and then that battle will be easy, peasy, lemon, squeezy, won't it, Donald? Also, what happened to your so-called upgrade plan, too? I'm working on it, Joe, but I'm not sure if it will be 100% possible to achieve by the next episode. And I thought I would be kind and impart some wisdom on you, but instead you act like an ungrateful shit and threw it all back in my face. I wonder where he learned that sort of behavior, Donald Elamau. But anyway, Joe, well done for making it to the end of the tiniest forest in Pokemon history. And now we've rendezvoused with all our friends to head to the next route together. You make this sound like a military operation Obama by saying rendezvous. Well, out of the three of us, Obama has always been the best at organizing military operations. Yeah, he thinks he's such a big man when he's not Joe. And look, these idiots just gave us the Adventure Rules book like we're a bunch of amateur peasant Pokemon trainers. Who the hell do they think we are? Well, I'm certainly bigger than you, Donnie. I've also achieved more than you could ever dream of, too. But that aside, look, it's another Gen 1 Pokemon for us to deal with. This is actually getting annoying now. Yeah, we've battled like two new Pokemon since we started playing, which is quite frustrating. But at least Caterpie here is trash and a good warm-up for me before I take on the gym battle. It was level two as well. Can you believe this shit, boys? No wonder people say this game was so easy when we have to battle trash like that. Yeah, and now this kid has an Azuril too. He just has baby Pokemon with him because he's a little baby himself. You know this game beat all the other ones in our poll by quite a large margin, and I'm surprised it even beat Pokemon Black and White 2 boys. So what do you two like about this game then? Well, Donald, I think I'm right in saying this was the first mainline series Pokemon game that was all 3D, excluding Colosseum and others like that. But before this game was in fact the Black and White 2 series, which was the pixel style, 
Do any of you guys miss the pixel style Pokemon games? Because I really do. But this was the game which introduced Mega Evolutions, and that was probably one of the biggest changes in Pokemon for a long time. Joe, you forgot that fairy types were also introduced in this game too, which I think is an even bigger change since Mega Evolutions got ditched after this game. But fairy types are here forever now. Arceus must have got bored, so he made a new type LML. Oh yeah, I forgot about that, Donnie. That is probably the biggest change. Hey, the roller skates were also a feature I really loved in this game too, boys. It made moving about way smoother and more controllably unlike the bicycle, which at times was way too fast, especially for Joe with his arthritis finger joints. Speaking of roller skates, Obama, that maniac, almost ran us over in them. This is absolutely a situation to send SEAL Team 6 in for Joe for almost killing an active president. Oh ho, Donald, you're right, I could have died there. I will hunt that moron down just like Liam Neeson did for his daughter. Before that, Joe, we forgot to mention the Pokemon Center's getting a mad overhaul in the interior design department. I actually like this style a lot, and this carried on into Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, too. Yeah, they went and added changing rooms to Obama. I loved spending my time in Lumio City, blowing all my money on the most expensive clothes so everyone knows I'm rich. Except I remember you never made it inside that one shop, Donald, which said you weren't stylish enough to enter LML. Wait, there's actually a shop like that in this game? There is Joe, and it's the most BS thing ever. I can't remember the prerequisites to enter that place, but I'm just gonna buy the whole establishment and then fire everyone in it. They will get the full wrath of Donald J. Trump. Or you could just get better fashion sense, Donald LML. Whatever, Obama, anyway. Look, we didn't introduce Santa and Loon City, which we've just entered, boys. And I like the architecture here, it's very quaint. Yeah, it's a nice little city, Donald, but I wouldn't exactly call it a city, it's more like a town or village. There isn't much to do here either. Well, like every first major town we visit, Joe, there's always a Pokemon school to visit. And don't get any ideas about hanging around in there for too long, Joe, you creep. I love how there's just one classroom in this school, Obama. Like there's only one school in the entirety of Kalos, and it can only hold like 10 children, Elmao. Well, this was very kind of this teacher, boys. He just gave me some X items. I wonder if we played Pokemon Y, we would have got some Y items from him instead. Joe, your intelligence is sometimes frightening. Well, lack there of Donald, but anyway, I think we should start looking for the gym now, Joe. Hey, look, this is that news reported journalist chick who was in the anime Obama. She had that Go Goat Pokemon and also that Dragon Bat thing that liked the spicy tomato berries. Oh, looks like this is the game's way of telling us we can't proceed until we beat the gym first, boys. Although I'm starting to get nervous, Donald, since our little Froakie might get destroyed. Look, Joe, this is the maniac who almost ran you over just standing in front of the gym like she owns the fucking place. And she even had the audacity to rub it in some more with a battle. Joe, if you want to take her out, then now's your chance, bro. Well, Obama, I did just read what she said, and apparently if we beat her in a Pokemon battle, then she'll give us a pair of roller skates of our own, and I think receiving those as a gift is the perfect apology for almost getting run over. What do you two think? Oh, Amazing hell deal, yeah, Joe. Joe. Okay, well, all I have to do is beat this stupid raccoon and then we can scoot all around Kalos and also be a maniac, LML. I just want to say, Joe, that this is the highlight of this episode for me. I want you all now to imagine Donald J. Trump roller skating his way around Kalos now and what a beautiful image that is in your minds. Okay, well, I think I was just sick in my mouth. All right, here we go, boys. I beat the original maniac and now she's imparting us with a pair of skates. This is also the highlight for me, Donald, but I'm not going to tell our viewers to imagine me skating because I'm nice. Okay, on that note, I say we end this episode here, boys. We hope you enjoyed it, so please remember to like and subscribe. Yeah, we hope you enjoy our new series, everyone, and we're super excited to be making it and hope you all stick around to enjoy this new adventure with us. Alrighty, everyone, and welcome back to Pokemon X and Y, and we have a few announcements right off the bat to give. Howdy, howdy, ho! And the first one, many of you probably saw just now that we are, in fact, playing Pokemon Y now instead of X. Yep, that's right, Obama. Many of you in the first episode of this series said you wished we had played Y instead, and we also wanted to, but originally couldn't find a copy. But thanks to yours truly and my Russian buddies, we now have a copy of Pokemon Y for you all to enjoy. Yeah, this game is the better version because of Charizard Y. That's and bullshit, And we will be using Joe. that instead of Bulbasaur now, so I can convince Donald that Mega Charizard Y is just as good, if not better, than X. No way! So if you enjoy our content, 
please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Yeah, 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 Joe, we'll see about that. And one more thing, we would like to thank Howard Kim for becoming the first member of our channel. Yeah, thank you, Howard. We don't really advertise the join feature, but thank you so much to him for helping to support the channel. And if anyone else would like to, then please consider joining and you'll gain some cool extra perks and also help us to continue to make these videos. Yep, thank you, Howard. I wonder if it's the one from Big Bang Theory, but anyway, watch me now, boys, as we take on the first gym in the Kalos region. Looking forward to it, Joe, and also we received so many suggestions for what team members we could use in this playthrough. So thank you so much for all the ideas and some we'll definitely be using our AG Slash and Gudra. A shiny AG Slash, to be specific. I'm sure Joe can find one of those LMAO, but anyway, boys, check it out. Our Hanzo is upgraded like I said it would be. Donald, comment as to obtain new Pokemon Brillant Bon Sang Mech as to encore contact les Russes ou quoi. Joe, OMG, you fool, please stop speaking French. I told you in the last episode you sound like a pretentious shit and also I have no idea what you're saying too. Donald, what I said was, how did you get a shiny Pokemon, holy hell bro? Did you contact the Russians again or what? See, why couldn't you just say it in English like a normal person, you idiot? Because Donald, I said it in French like a normal French person would. Can't argue with that logic, can you, Donny El Mayo? But if anyone in the comments can actually speak French, then please leave a comment down below and tell us if what Joe said was actually French or if he's trying to sound clever, El Mao. Yeah, and anyway, we didn't use a shiny Froakie before, and it doesn't matter how I got it or who I got it from, more specifically, Joe. All that matters is I get a lot of gifts from people because of who I am. A fool! And there's a possibility one of those said gifts was this Froakie. All right, whatever, Donald, I'm not even going to bother asking anymore, but I hope this little guy will do us proud in this playthrough and this gym battle, too, because we are at a disadvantage here. Trust me, Joe, I'm so confident in this guy that I know for a fact he won't even faint, ever. And if he does, you can call me whatever name you like within reason. All right, shut it, Donald, and let Joe concentrate, since this is his first battle, and we want to get to Lumio City as soon as possible so we can get our next Pokemon for the team. Fine, Obama, but can I talk about some of the other suggestions we got from our viewers for what Pokemon we should use in this playthrough? We got so many, I probably can't mention them all, but I can try. Sure, Donnie, fire away whilst I kill this stupid piece of shit Surskit brutally and with no remorse because I hate this Pokemon with a passion. Wow, that was quite violent for you, Joe. You almost sounded like Emperor Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith when he told Annie to kill the younglings LMAO. No, I just think that Surskit is trash. And if anyone tries to defend it in the comments, then you're no longer my friend. Hey, Joe, listen here, buddy. You can't go around attacking other people's opinions like that. That's Donald's thing. But anyway, well done for taking her first Pokemon down. But now it's time for her strongest one. Ah, uh, yes, this is Vivian Obama, and she has the pink variant. I wonder if we could try to catch all the variants during our time here in Kalos. Okay, well, you can add that task to the list, which already contains leveling up a Zwyloos to a Hydreigon Joe, because I know for a fact Obama hasn't got the time to do all that shit, and neither do I. But wouldn't it be cool to have all the colors of Vivian by the time this series has ended? I mean, imagine how much street cred I would get if I achieved that, boys. Yeah, I'm with Donald on this one, Joe. You can do that in your spare time, and if you do, then good for you, and I'll give you a cookie, but that's about all you'll get, bro. El Mao. I will, however, congratulate you, Joe, on beating this gym so well done for that dude. This is the first gym dealt with in a rather swiftly manner, and I told you our Froakie wouldn't faint either. Donald, it's been in one battle, and it wasn't even that difficult, let's be honest, and we have like a thousand more battles to go, so we'll see how strong this Froakie of yours is. Remember our one in Pokemon Omega, Ruby died a lot. Yeah, well, this one is better, Joe, in every way. Just being shiny is in itself a massive W. Agreed, Donald. Anything shiny is an immediate W, and we love shiny things. And talking about that, we had a viewer comment that we need some mad drips in this game, and I couldn't agree more. So you better stock all that money up, Joe, so we can dress like a proper G. Hang on, Obama. In the last episode, you gave me shit for spending all my hard-earned poke dollars on clothes. And now, just because of one viewer, your view has suddenly changed? Explain that, please, you fool. Well, Donald, our viewers is what makes this channel what it is, and without them, we'd be nothing. So instead of bitching at me, why don't you use this opportunity to try learn some humility? Okay, I think I was just sick in my mouth listening to you spew all that crap. Oh, what the hell, boys? Look, our Pokemon has a virus. Joe, what the hell, man? What the fuck did you do to our poor little Froakie? You went and gave it the Rona. 
Donald, calm down. It's just Pokerus. It's a really rare virus that boosts our Pokemon stats for a bit, I think. And it can also spread to other members of the team, but I don't think it lasts all the time. Okay, well, if that's the case, Obama, we need to get our team ASAP and then make our Froakie cough all over the other Pokemon so they get the virus too, so our team is even more OP. Donald, you dumbass. They just need to be next to each other in the party and it will spread all by itself. But anyway, that Pokerus will probably be gone by the time we get the other members of our team. I hope it lasts at least till we get our little Charmander through, boys. Because look, I'm now on Route 4 and getting close to Lumio City. I'm really not looking forward to that city, though. It's so big, and with my dementia, I know I'll forget where I've been. Don't worry, Joe. We'll help you get around Lumios. And by the way, I think I'm right in saying Pokerus has never appeared in the anime series, has it, boys? Yeah, I think that's right, Obama. Maybe it's just a game thing, because I don't remember it appearing in the shows. By how much does having Pokerus actually help us, though? Is it like a major effect we will be able to feel, or is it a slight stat change we get? which then lowers when the virus is gone. I have no idea, Joe, but maybe one of our viewers could comment and let us know how Pokerus works. I mean, I could Google it, but I'm lazy and way too busy doing many things. Donald, you're just lazy, period. That is something I will neither confirm or deny Obama. And oh yeah, boys, I have a difficult situation I need both your advice with. All right, fire away with your situation, old buddy, old pal. Well, a viewer commented in the last video that we should use Sylveon in this playthrough and we haven't actually used a single evolution yet in any of our playthroughs, but my issue is that Sylveon is pink. Jesus Christ, Donald. Hey, Jesus is one fellow who I guarantee would never wear pink Obama. Donald, I thought you were gonna ask us a serious question and not something as stupid as that holy hell. I think Sylveon would be a great member for our team and I don't care if it's pink. And anyway, Donald, you're not even playing, so what difference does it make to you? Yeah, but Joe, I'll have to look at it whenever we record, and I can't handle that. All right, but we have to look at you every time we record as well, and you don't hear us complain, do you, Donald? Even our viewers have to deal with listening to your annoying ass voice in every video. Yeah, but our viewers love me, Obama, so your logic is flawed, bro. Well, I'm sure a lot of our viewers love Sylveon, including Obama and myself, so shut up, Donald. And would someone leave a comment down below about how we can go about getting a Sylveon and I'll find out whoever suggested it and name it after them. Just a warning, Joe, that Pokemon is even more tedious to get than trying to evolve a Hydreigon. And there is no way on earth I'm going to try evolve an Eevee into one. So if you do want one, then you're on your own. Donald, even if you wanted one, you'd still make Joe do all the work to evolve an Eevee. So what difference does it make? Well, yeah, but I could say the same thing to you too, Obama El Mao. Hey, I'm not going to deny that I'd also make Joe do all the work as usual. And I think he even knows how this works at this point. You know what's sad is that all of what you said is true, Obama, but I'm getting used to being the training bitch among us. And that even feels sad to say about myself. Do you want to know what's even more sad, Joe? What's the most sad is we've encountered more Pichu and Pikachu so far than any other Pokemon in the first two episodes of this series. That is just tragic. Okay, yeah, I can't deny that, Donald. It's getting really boring now, but I think by the time we get to the next route after Lumio City, the variety of Pokemon we'll encounter will be different. And talking of Lumio City, we finally made it, boys. This is officially the biggest city in any Pokemon game after Castilia, I think. And this is actually one of my favorites. It just has so much going on. Yep, it's a great place to be and is modeled to Paris like the one in France. And also the Prism Tower in the middle is meant to be the Eiffel Tower, too. Oh, j'adore Paris tellement. Donald et moi adorons qu'ils aient conçu Lumio City à l'image de Paris aussi. Joe, fucking hell, stop doing that. You sound like you're performing a séance to summon a demon. Well, Donald Halloween is coming up and actually probably has already happened by the time this video is uploaded, so it would be fitting to see some demons, don't you think? I already act like a demon, Joe, so don't need any more taking all the attention away from me. Thank you very much, bro. Now hurry up and go meet the new professor, whatever his name is. His name is Professor Sycamore Donald, and I actually really like him. He was really cool in the anime series, and the X and Y anime series is renowned to be one of the best since it felt more grown up, and the animation style was amazing. That's actually a really good point, Obama. And then the Sun and Moon anime came out, and it felt like Ash de-aged by 10 years, LMAO. But anyway, leave a comment down below letting us know which season in the Pokemon anime you guys all like the best. 
All righty, boys, here's the main man himself looking dapper as hell. He has some great hair. And this is when we get the next member of our team, isn't it, boys? Yeah, Joe, we'll get it now, I think. And another surprise, too. Also, each professor in the games has an aspect of Pokemon they study. And in this game, Professor Sycamore studies why some Pokemon can mega evolve and others can't. Well, Donald, that's not exactly a difficult topic to research, is it? Even I know the answer to that. Go on then, Joe. Please enlighten us and put poor Professor Sycamore out of business. Well, he deserves to go out of business, Obama, if even Joe can do all the research for him and tell him the answer as well. El Mao. Whilst I battle him, I can tell you both the answer. And the answer is that the developers only chose some Pokemon to mega evolve and not all of them. Obama, why do we even play with him? What even is the point of Joe Biden? The point of Joe Biden, Donald, is to make sure ice cream sales stay strong in D.C. Among other things, LMAO. I wish that was the case, Obama, but all I seem to do is the heavy lifting for you two, and this is now our fifth playthrough, if you can believe it. Yeah, five playthroughs in, and you're still pathetic, Joe Elmao. And also, I have a question for our viewers. You all seem to love the full movies at the end of each series, so since this is the fifth one, how would you like an ultra movie of all our other movies combined into one video? Yeah, it's been something we were thinking about. Maybe if you guys have long flights or car journeys, you could sit back and watch our antics in one video, which will probably last the entirety of your journey. So if you like that idea, then please let us know. That video would probably be like 14 hours long too. LMAO, so if anyone travels to Australia or New Zealand a lot, then I'm sure you'd appreciate a video like that. But anyway, back to this game, boys. Joe has been battling the Kanto starters. Yeah, and just look at how strong our Froakie is, too. It's just destroying everything. This Greninja is going to be even more goaded than the one we used in Pokemon Omega Ruby. Hang on, boys. I just realized something. We're currently battling the Pokemon Professor Sycamore is going to give us. So what if they hate us after I beat them? This is so cruel. Well, Joe, there is no us in your statement. It's all you, buddy, brutally massacring these cute little baby Pokemon. And I will quote what you said earlier. Kill them with no remorse. Donald, I was talking about a fucking surskit, not these cutie pies. How dare you twist my words? Blah, 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 Joe's a loser. Why don't you two look at the game because our Froakie is already evolving into a frogadier. Yes, this is way more interesting than Donald's blabbering. It's all because of me that our Froakie evolved this time. I just want to say that shiny frogadier is quite shit to look at. It literally looks the same as the normal one. What the hell? I think the colors are a little different, Donald, but other than that, yeah, it's shit, but I can see why they did this. It's because no one ever sticks with the middle evolution of a Pokemon anyway, so they probably got lazy with the designs. Well, that's not an excuse to be lazy, Obama, is it? I bet the second evolution colors of the other two starters are just as shit, too. Actually, all the middle Pokemon starters are just plain shit. Sorry, Donald, but I gotta cut off your rant right there and ask our viewers for a nickname for our little Charmander. All right, Joe, this should make you happy. We got the Megastone for Charizard, and this time it's the Y one. Hell yeah, Obama, I'm super excited to prove to Donald that Mega Y is better than X. All our viewers seem to think so as well. I remember that rival of Ashes in the anime also had a Megastone for his Charizard, and it was the Y one. Yeah, but if you also remember, Joe, that Charizard got absolutely creamed LMAO. It didn't last like 10 minutes before it got taken out. Well, Donald, I'd like you to remember that Alon's Charizard X got taken out by Leon's Charizard, and he didn't even Dynamax or Mega Evolve it. It was just a normal Charizard El Mao. Well, Donald, it seems that both of our Mega Charizards are shit. What do you say we call it even? All right, Joe, but my version is the least shit of the two El Mao. Look, Joe, can you guess or have any idea to who this orange-haired guy could be? Well, Obama, this guy is talking about trying to create a better chaos for everyone, which is what I'm trying to do for our great country. And I'm not a bad guy, so this fellow can't be either for sure. So I'm going to say this is one of the goodest guys, and he's on our side. Joe would think Giovanni was a good guy, Obama, if we weren't there to tell him. I bet he wouldn't have figured it out. Well, this is Joe for you, Donnie, and at the end of the day, he's still our friend. I have no idea what you two are talking about, but anyway, boys, looks like all our friends are going in different directions now. Serena has gone to a cafe, and Shauna and these two have their own agendas. You know, this is another thing I really like about this game, is that our friends don't have the same goal as we do to become champion. 
This game is really like the anime where everyone has their own journey, but we still meet up and battle now and then to see how far we've all come. Hey, that's a really sweet way to put it, Donald, and you're totally right as well. Looks like Shauna is over there, though, Joe waiting for us, so go talk to her. Oh no, Obama, this whole part of the game is just pointless. Shauna here is gonna talk to us about the Poke Showcase, which is essentially Kalos's version of Pokemon contests combined with TikTok videos. Wow, so Kalos had TikTok and YouTube shorts 10 years before they became an actual thing. Talk about some foreshadowing. Well, they aren't necessarily the same as TikTok videos, Joe, but they're close. Either way, Donald is right. They're pointless in this game and will serve no purpose for us unless you two want to dress up and make some cute videos together, Lomeo. Donald can dress up with Stormy and make videos MFAO. All right, Joe, that was very uncalled for, bro. Did not see that one coming, LML. Look, boys, Lisandre is back in this random cafe with Diantha. And Joe, do you have any idea who this could be? Well, Lisandre said she's some sort of movie star Obama, so I don't particularly care who she is or what she does, but I'm happy to see Lisandre again. He literally reminds me of a lion. Obama, why the hell are we even in here other than to see Diantha for the first time? Well, Donald Serena wanted us to join her for a date in this cafe, El Mao. But actually, I think she just wanted to say bye to us before we start our adventure for real. And also, if you remember, she loves desserts like in the anime. Okay, well, judging by her conversation with us right now, she's asking you to be her official rival, Joe. So if you get beaten by a girl at any point in this game, I'm never gonna let you hear the end of it. Donald, you really need a good lesson in being humbled, bro. Your time is coming, just you wait. I mean, I could increase your prison sentence by another 100 years, or I could dump you in the middle of the Amazon jungle and leave you to fend for yourself. Well, Joe, at least in prison, I can still play games with you and Obama. But if you leave me in the middle of the biggest jungle on the planet, what are you gonna do then? Get some peace and quiet. And now look, Obama, we're finally heading out of Lumio City towards the next gym in town, whatever it's called. Yeah, funnily enough, Kalos is the only region where I can never remember the names of the towns we visit, but either way, it'll make it feel like I'm playing the game again for the first time. Hey, Obama, I forgot this guy existed. Mr. Bonding or whatever he's called, give us these weird powers. And to be honest, I never used them when I first played through this game. And I don't think you should either, Joe, since it never affected me. So from my understanding, he gives us stat boosting powers to use in battle or something, right guys? Basically, yeah, Joe, but I'm with Donald on this one. Don't use them since this game is already easy and we don't need it any easier, LMAO. Ah, boys, this Lucario is harassing me, help. Joe, seriously, you're gonna play Emerald Kaizo one day, bro, and when you beat it, I will finally call you a man like myself and Obama. Hang on, Donald, you two haven't even played it, so I can't call you men either. Joe, instead of arguing, you should be paying attention to the game because this young girl here is actually one of the gym leaders, and eventually you'll battle her, so I hope you'll be ready for it. Guarantee the little wimp won't be ready at all, Obama and me, and you will be there backing him up and basically carrying the old fossil all the way through this game. You should be used to that at this point, Donald, because I am. And this is gonna be a long journey too, and also in our other playthroughs, we've basically ignored all the legendary Pokemon except the box one, however. We definitely need the special one right at the end. Oh shit, yeah, I forgot about that special Pokemon, Obama. We could go back and do the Elite Four rematches with it after Joe becomes champion, or I should say, if he becomes champion, LML. Hey, what special Pokemon is that, Donald? I really would like to know. Joe, what's the point in us telling you? Because it would spoil it, and also some of our viewers may not know what we've been talking about as well. Trust me, it'll be worth the surprise. Yeah, how about you focus on this battle instead, Joe, because you're struggling to battle against a Plusle and Minin of all things, which is just embarrassing, and you call yourself a three-time champ. It's not my fault, Obama. My little Charmander is only level 10, and Frogadier has no good moves yet either. If we at least had a Charmeleon, I would have sweeped these two by now. Yeah, seriously, imagine struggling against these two shit Pokemon LMO. Obama battled loads of them in Hoenn Joe, and he never complained once. He just got on with it. Donald, listen here, you prick. I have had enough of this constant patronizing from you, and I'm gonna put my foot down and in your mouth too if you keep up with this constant nagging. Yeah, 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 Joe, you'll have forgotten what you just said to me after I'm done talking anyway, but at least you finally beat these two trainers, so well done for that. Thanks, Donnie, I told you I would eventually. I think we'll have a rival battle coming up next though, Joe, so get ready for that. And also, in our last episode, we asked everyone who their favorite rival is, 
and the most popular votes were for blue, which was obvious, and also silver, who I forgot about. Yeah, silver was a great rival, and I think his development was one of the best. He started off as a bully, literally beating his Pokemon, but then turned out to be quite the softy. Well, his dad is in fact Giovanni Donald, and I'm sure his parenting style would have been a little different to the normal parenting styles, since not many parents are the boss of an evil organization. Unless your name is Donald Trump. Just shut up, Joe, and beat this fat so please. Look, even Tierno here wants to be our rival as well. How can we have so many rivals? It makes no sense. Well, I forgot the only Pokemon he has is a Corfish LMAO. Joe, if you struggle against this like you did with Plusle and Minin earlier, then I'm not letting you play anymore. At this level, Obama, I'm really not worried, but it's a bit sad he didn't get to choose any of the starter Pokemon, isn't it? And what's even more sad is we had the chance to choose more than one starter, and they're super rare Pokemon, too. Okay, well done, Joe, for beating this loser. Not that it was difficult, but on that note, I think this is a good place to end the episode here, boys. Good idea, Donnie, so thanks for watching, everyone. We're really glad you're all enjoying this series. And if you like this video, then please hit that like button and subscribe. And thanks again to Howard for becoming our first member. If you have any Pokemon suggestions, then please leave it below and we'll name it Howard after you. Yeah, thank you, Howard, bro. I think Donald would even name you after Arceus. But anyway, have a great week, everyone, and happy Halloween, too. Hey everyone and welcome back to Pokemon X and Y even though we're playing Y and the only reason we switched is because I love Evil Tall. Hello my peeps. But anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe and consider becoming a member if you like as it really helps the channel out. But anyway, here we go. Joe, what's the plan for today? Well, your boy Joe Biden here hopes to make it to the next town which has a gym as I think that Camphrier town or whatever the hell it's called doesn't actually have one. Yeah, I think you're right, Joe. And look, boys, this is one of the newest Pokemon Joe's just encountered in this game. This is Furfrau, and it's a cool Pokemon because you can actually change the style of its hair. I wish that was something you'd consider doing Donald LMAO shots fired right there by yours truly, Joe fucking Biden. But anyway, we won't be using one of these doggos in the playthrough as the next Pokemon we aim to catch is Honage. I'm only not going to insult you back, Joe, because you said you're going to catch Hone Edge, which is a Pokemon everyone wants us to use. And also, you might not find a shiny one in this episode. And if that's the case, then I shall give you the secret Russian phone number. Yeah, I don't think there's any way Joe is going to catch a shiny Hone Edge in this playthrough, Donnie. So you may as well pass that phone number over right now. Hang on, Obama, can you believe this shit? Look, this dumbass trainer has no Gen 6 Pokemon at all, and only Pokemon from Kanto and Sinnoh. And Joe was the one who said the variety would change after Lumio City. Hey, I thought the variety would change, but apparently I was wrong, Donald. And unlike you, I have the balls to admit that. All right, you two, I have some announcements I forgot to mention in the beginning. First off, we always read the comments and feedback from you guys. And the general consensus is everyone wants an ultra movie at the end of this series, which is something we can totally do for you. And also, I have been requested to give a shout out to at Mirnarichard282 for being a subscriber since we had 100 subs. Oh yeah, he's the viewer whose mom can speak French and I think they translated some of Joe's dodgy French skills, LMAO. Ah, merci Mirnarichard d'être abonné. Oh fucking hell, here we go. Et aussi à de montrer à tout le monde à quel point mes compétences en français sont précises et incroyables. Contrairement à Donald, qui est juste jaloux de ne pas pouvoir parler français. Joe, please stop with this shit. One viewer even commented that they were forced to learn French and now because of you, they're probably getting PTSD from those times. But Donald, the French language is so beautiful and full of romance and happiness and I just love speaking it. I said I was enjoying it, Joe, but it's getting annoying now, so please stop. And anyway, you should be focusing on the game and getting our Charmander leveled up because right now it only knows Scratch, which is just tragic. Well, Obama, I have one more thing I'd like to say. If anyone can give us the coolest or more interesting Pokemon fact and comment it down below, then we'll give you a shout out in the next episode. Hey, not a bad idea, Joe. Apparently I need some humbling. So yeah, some interesting Pokemon facts from our viewers will be fun to read. All right, Joe, that'll be a fun idea, I agree. I'll go through the comments when this episode is out, then in the next one, I'll shout out someone. Oh, check it out, boys. It's the cute little green monkey again. I remember this little fellow from our Pokemon black and white playthrough, but sadly we never used it since our team was way stronger in the end anyway. 
Pansage is one little cutie for sure, Donnie, and maybe in another playthrough we could use it. No way, Joe. We have better options for grass types, and anyway, I want to use Bulbasaur eventually. Actually, having a full team of starter Pokemon would be super cool, wouldn't it? Obama, that would be the dumbest idea ever. We'd have the same type of Pokemon twice, which would be so pointless. The best team is to have the most varied types possible. Donald, I said it would be cool to have a full team of six starter Pokemon, but I never said it would be practical, did I, you dumbass? Oh look, my guys, this is the Holocaster which that lovely man, Lysandre, designed. He's like the Tim Apple of the Kalos region, isn't he? And Tim Apple is a really great guy, right, Donald? Oh yeah, I love Tim Apple, Joe, but I got a lot of shit for that tweet way back when, and I still don't get it, but anyways, check this drug den out, Elamau. Donald, these guys run the PC boxes in the Kalos region, and apparently Bill helped them set this place up, but these are the last people I would let manage the entire PC system in Kalos. I mean, just look at these people. Yeah, these guys do look quite sketchy, Obama. But that lady gave me the TM for Thief, which is ironic, first of all, but secondly, it was quite nice of her to do that, too. Okay, well, anyway, Joe, you've made it to this town, whatever it's called. I've already forgotten, and there's absolutely fuck all to do here. What's even the point of this place? Well, Obama, this town is like a bridge between the roots and a place for us to heal our Pokemon up. But I guess they could have just stuck a Pokemon Center in the middle of a root, and the same thing would have been achieved LMAO. Yeah, if I missed anything in this town, then please leave a comment down below since I really can't be bothered to check every house out right now since I'm a lazy shit and I'm proud to admit that. Well, they have a shitty looking hotel here too. Joe, and apparently this receptionist has every single job role possible in a hotel, including the chef. He even has his own chef whites on. Yeah, this town is really strange, but anyway, Joe, to continue with this story, we got to do Shauna's little side quest here. Yeah, Shauna is here researching Mega Evolution because apparently no one in Kalos knows what it is or has even heard of it, which is the dumbest part of this story because Deantha has a fucking keystone. Why does Diantha, of all people, need a keystone? All she does is act in movies, so why she needs one and we don't have one yet is just beyond me. If that's beyond you, Joe, then what's beyond me is the fact that you still haven't worked out who she is yet, or Lysander, to be honest. I still say we let him figure it out for himself, Donald, and then he can realize how much of an idiot he is, LML. But anyway, Joe, there's three paths to choose here, so pick whichever you want. I can't remember what's south, though. Oh, great boys, I'm being dumped with this stupid farm because these two lazy shits can't be bothered to do any of the work themselves. Don't they realize what I'm here to achieve? Joe, this place would be quite useful for us since we can grow all the berries we want and then use them in battles, although that's something we've never actually done. See, Donald, you just proved my point with how pointless this place is, and we aren't going to do any breeding either. Not that I think berries help with that anyway, but... I'm just trying to come up with as many excuses as possible to not turn this into farming simulator. Talking about breeding Joe, lots of viewers commented on how to get a Sylveon. And it seems like way too much work for me. And I'm going to say for Donald too, so it's all going to be up to you, Joe. Also, I have a friend who can trade us a shiny hone edge since I don't trust you to find us one El Mao. Obama, if you can trade a shiny hone edge that would make my life 10 times easier and I would really appreciate it. I'll promise to never put you down or blame you for anything ever again. Joe, you wouldn't blame me for anything anyway because you know where I stand in this hierarchy. And the only reason I'm gonna trade that hone edge is for the sake of time so we can get these videos out to our viewers as quick as possible. It will be level one though since it just hatched from an egg so have fun leveling it up. All right, so Joe has lots to do in this playthrough then, LML. He has to train up a level one hone edge and then get a Sylveon. But where do we get an Eevee from? I can check online for one Donald and see the locations to get Eevee. I'm not worried though because I have the absolute perfect name for our Sylveon when we get it LMAO. Well, whatever you name it, it better be worthy of that pink little rat shit Joe because I still do not approve of Sylveon at all. There are so many better Pokemon we could use, but I guess we should use lots of Gen 6 Pokemon. I think Sylveon will be a really great member for our team, Donald, and you will absolutely love the name I give it, LMAO. Well, I know Obama and our viewers will. But anyway, boys, back to the story. Apparently a huge Snorlax is blocking the bridge to the next town. Yeah, so Joe, you're on your way to some palace around here to get the Poke Flute, which is interesting because in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, we use the radio to play the music to wake Snorlax up.
Yeah, and since Lysander is meant to be the Tim Apple of Kalos, you would have thought his holocaster device would have a fucking radio on it, but apparently not. I agree, Donald. This part of the game seems super pointless and dead. I mean, we could just walk over Snorlax's huge belly, and I doubt it would even wake up. Hey, guys, check it out. Our little Charmander is evolving into Charmeleon. Not that it's very exciting since we used it before, but I can't wait to use Charizard Y. Yeah, big fucking deal, Obama. Thinking more about it, I would have preferred to use Bulbasaur, too. Maybe if we play Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, we can rebuild Red's team. That would be a fun thing to do. Wow, Donald, this place looks like a house you'd want to live in LMAO and people could get tours inside. I mean, this guy here is charging us 1,000 bucks just to enter the palace, which is a scam in of itself. Yeah, I could definitely live in a place like this, Joe. It looks like Buckingham Palace in London, though they for sure took inspiration from that. But I hate London ever since the people there thought it would be funny to inflate a balloon of me looking like a baby. I remember that, Donald. It was the funniest shit ever, LMAO. I got to have tea with the queen, God bless her soul, whilst you weren't even welcome. Yeah, 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 whatever, Obama. Anyway, look at that golden Milotic statue. I am so gonna ask my designers to build me one of these for Trump Tower in New York, LMAO. I swear they took inspiration from your bathroom to build this place, Donald. It's just all gold and red, which are your two favorite colors. It's way too much for me. I could never live here. Check out that view, though Joe looks pretty neat. And they even have a huge statue of Golurk just chilling there with a palpitoad. Why would they choose such random Pokemon, though? Even more impressive than that Obama is the statues of Rashiram and Zekrom they have placed in these gardens. To be honest, this doesn't make any sense either. Why would you have these two when you could have Dialga and Palkia instead, or even better, a huge statue of Arceus? Yeah, a statue of Arceus would be even more fitting, Donald. I agree with you, man. Could some explain to me why they have Zekrom and Rishiram here, though it for real makes no sense? I would also like to know the answer to that as well, Joe, but anyway, the whole purpose of us coming here was to get the flute to wake up Snorlax, but first we need to catch the owner's fur fro. Why do I need to do all this crap, though, Obama? Why can't the moron who owns this place just return the fur fro into a poke ball like a normal person would? I mean, I'm an idiot, and even I would know to do that. That's some big brain strats right there from Joe Biden, El Mayo, Obama. But he has a point. This puzzle is so dumb as well, all to get a stupid flute. Okay, Joe, I'll help you with this one. Basically, Shauna will help you out, but you gotta tell her where to stand first. So when you walk up to the fur fro, its path gets blocked, which will allow you to trap it. Oh dear, I'm really not good at puzzles, Obama. They stress me out so much. I feel my blood pressure increase every time I look at the Sudoku puzzles on the New York Times website. All right, we made a quick cut here since Joe took literally forever to solve this dumb puzzle and nothing entertaining even happened. But anyway, here we are finally at the end of the ordeal. Yeah, sorry about that everyone, I'm quite stupid. But anyway, this dude seems happy we caught his Pokemon for him and I'm sure he'll be kind enough to let us have the flute now. All right, apparently this fellow is gonna host a fireworks show, so you gotta head to the second floor balcony, Joe. But my question is, who the fuck does a fireworks show in the middle of the afternoon? This guy has more money than sense, kinda like you, Donnie LMAO. Fuck off, Obama. This guy clearly has things set straight in his life. And you're just jealous you'll never live in a place like this or be able to afford to have a fireworks show during the day. I bet this guy is so rich he can even control the day-night cycle. That's not how money works, Donald, you dumbass. But look here, we are at the balcony with Shauna, and I can't wait to see what a daytime fireworks show looks like. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Oh, great, and now we're getting a cheesy cutscene with Shauna, and she probably thinks she's on a date with us. Oh, sorry, I mean with you, Joe, but you're probably not interested since she's too old for you, Lamau. I'm not admitting to anything, Obama, except this is seriously so dumb. I just want that damn flute so we can get the hell out of here. Well, here are the fireworks, boys. They look incredibly shit. Not gonna lie, I will agree with you both there. But you can still see them, so I guess that's kind of impressive, don't you both think? It would have been more impressive to launch a few Draco meteors into the air, and then you could play a game called Don't Get Killed by the Meteors, El Mao. That would have been pretty funny. Joe and Draco Meteor is a really cool move to look at as well. Way better than these fireworks, but anyway. Look who's decided to show up finally. Maybe he'll give us the flute now. Yeah, there we go, boys. Finally got it. So let's bounce and go wake up Donald from blocking the bridge with his fat ass El Mao. I was wondering when that joke would make its appearance from your mummified mouth, Joe. But I'm surprised it took this long. Anyway, 
I'm glad we can finally leave now and we never ever have to come back here, although I am sending my architect back. With that flute, we'll be able to battle Snorlax Joe, so you're gonna have a choice between catching it or killing it. I mean, we could even use it for our team if you wanted. Not Obama? As much as I'd love to have a Snorlax named Donald on our team, he'd get over it quite quickly even though it's blue. But I have a way better Pokemon that shall represent Donald J. Trump in the future. And no, it's not Arceus, before you ask Donnie. Joe, this one definitely looks nothing like I do. First of all, I'm not that big, and also I'm not a mouth breather even. I sleep like an angel with my mouth shut. More like a demon, Donald El Mayo. But here we go, Joe. Time to battle Snorlax, and you might as well just kill it if you don't want to use it, since we're not going to come back to this game for a while anyway. Yeah, I'll just spam Dragon Rage until it dies, Obama. I remember Ash used one in the anime and it took out that frontier brain in one, so I do want to use it one, but today isn't that day. What you should be concerned about is the fact that we have an almost level 17 Charmeleon and it has no fire moves whatsoever. Joe, you could have at least taught it flame charge or something since we won't get flamethrower for a long time. Well, Donald, it's not like I have access to every TM in the game right now, is it? Otherwise, I would have taught it at least one fire-type move by now. And anyway, Dragon Rage is a strong move for this part of the game, unless we encounter fairy types. LMAO. Yeah, but all Dragon Rage does is 40 hit points of damage, Joe, which is just useless. You may as well just spam scratch at least. This Charmeleon we got from Professor Sycamore is quite shit, not gonna lie. It's not actually Donald, but we only need to train it up a little more. And anyway, Joe just beat Snorlax, which means we can proceed. There's gonna be lots for us to do in the next few routes. Yeah, the next gym is gonna be a rock-type gym, Joe, which means Frogadier is gonna sweep in there. Although I can't remember who the gym leader is at all. They're so forgetful in Kalos Mao. Well, look who decided to show up after I did all the work to move Snorlax. But anyway, boys, it's good to see these two again. But they wanna show me this building? What is this place, Obama? This is the daycare, Joe, just like there is in every other game, but this is one of the few games where they make a point to show us like Lyra did in Pokemon Heart Gold. However, we won't be using it since we aren't gonna be doing any competitive battles. You say that Obama, but we could leave one of our Pokemon in here and then make Joe do a million steps until that Pokemon gets to level 100 LMO. Donald, what would be the point of that? We'd be so OP and then this game would be more boring than one of my White House speeches I constantly have to give. I wish I could record more Pokemon episodes with the boys every day instead. Well, any less time spent with you would make my life more bearable, Joe. But I also love making videos with the boys. And talking of which, we got a double battle going on, Joe, with our friends. Let's see if Serena's gonna be worthy enough to partner up with us. She's leading off with a Fletchling against an Electric type and a Water type, so yeah, I'm gonna say she's gonna be a shit partner, Donald. And why the fuck does one of them have a Pikachu? I swear all there is here is Pikachu, 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 holy hell. I think that's Trevor who has a Pikachu Obama. As acting president of the United States of America, I will announce a new law that whoever has a Pikachu within their party is no longer our friend, unless their name is Donald, Obama, or Ash Ketchum from Pallet Town. That's probably the best and only law you've come up with, Joe, that I will ever agree with. And look, Obama Serena is performing like we expected. I say we ditch her as our friend too. At least Silver was a great rival and partner whenever we teamed up. Well, Donald, you never know. I may surprise you with more amazing laws by yours truly. And I also agree with you too. Now she's performing under par, kind of like you when you play golf. Donnie Elmau bet you didn't see that one coming. You gotta stop backhanding me in the face, Joe. This is getting out of control now. Joe, will you stop being a pathetic little loser? and just beat these idiots because Serena is being absolutely no help to us, so it's all on you, and right now, you're the one performing under par. Obama, I had to basically carry us through this battle. It was literally a 2v1 battle ever since Serena got her Fletchling paralyzed. And I hope to God we never have to tag team with her again. She's so trash. Well, thank God that's done with. I hate how they just randomly keep popping up. If I was playing this game instead of you, Joe, I'd get our Arceus from Platinum and get him to use judgment on these morons. Donald, if you did that, then Arceus would probably take out the entire Kalos region and probably the world, too. On a different note, there's two caves to choose here, boys. Why is that? The one you just took, Joe, was a shortcut to Ambrette Town, and the other was a longer cave, which we can come back to later, but I don't trust you going in there on your own. 
because you'll just get lost, LMAEO. All righty, Joe, welcome to Route 8, also known as the Morale Coast. And it's really beautiful here, except don't let your old age get the better of you, so you end up falling off this cliff, LMFAO. Yeah, this reminds me of the south of France, Donald. It's so pretty. But how the hell are we meant to get all the way down to that town by the beach we just passed? Well, Joe, this is going to be quite the trek, not going to lie. And it's quite annoying because there's nothing really interesting going on in these routes anyway. You just have to keep on walking. Actually, I think there's another town before Ambrett Donald. I can't remember what it's called. But in the anime, Ash and his friends went through a really cool aquarium to get to the beach. Obama, you are wrong, my friend. The next town is Ambrett, and the one after is Sillage City. That's the one with the rock type, Jim, and you go and call yourself a leader without even knowing basic facts like that. Donald, I just saw you Google the map of Kalos, you dumbass. At least try be more sneaky, you fool Elmao. You're almost as stupid as Joe sometimes, you know. And that's probably the worst insult to give someone in existence, LMFAO. Whatever you two, at least I know how to read a map. But here we are in Ambrett Town, where we actually will have lots to do, Joe. I can't remember what, but I know that you'll be busy, so don't fall asleep. Well, I guess I'll have a quick mooch around here and see what the townsfolk is like. But this place is hella small, boys, and what bright spark thought it would be smart to build an entire town on the edge of a fucking cliff. I mean, literally on the edge. Probably someone with a brain like yours, Joel Mao, but the only place you really need to head to in this town is the fossil lab where they can restore fossils funnily enough. This is where we could get a tyrant or a mora. Wow, this place is pretty cool, boys. They probably have fossils from all over the world here. Do you two think it would be cool to build an entire team of fossil Pokemon? No, Joe, it wouldn't because it would mostly be rock types. And did you guys see that Dragonite skull on the top shelf back there? I bet these guys poached that from the Unova region. Yeah, that's when Team Plasma thought it was Reshiram El Mao. What a bunch of noobs. But anyway, here comes Serena again, Joe. Let's see what these scientists want with us. Wow, these guys call themselves scientists, but they don't even know what mega evolution is. I am even more surprised now that no one in this damn region knows what mega evolution is. These guys should be fired for real. Well, Joe, whilst you were ranting, they just told us to go check out the fossil dig site in the glittering cave, which is east of here. But how about we end this episode for here now, boys? Yeah, sounds like a good idea, Donnie. We've been playing for a while. Sorry if this episode felt like a filler anime episode, everyone but these roots have been so long. Anyway, thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe. Yeah, thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you in the next one to explore this cave and take on the gym in the next city. Ooh, what a cliffhanger, Lamau. All righty, everyone, welcome back to Pokemon X and Y and we haven't got time for a proper intro and all that. Since we're picking up where we left off in the last episode with me dealing with this orange dude. Joe, you gotta have way more enthusiasm than that though, bro. And also tell everyone to like and subscribe if they enjoy the video as well. Oh yeah, sorry Obama. Hey everyone and welcome back to Pokemon X and Y and make sure you do whatever Obama just said and um, yeah, enjoy the video. Okay, we still have a lot of work to do with that, Joe. But anyway, we're back in the glittering cave taking on Team Flare, which is the evil team of the Kalos region. Yeah, and we're rating this team second to last in the hierarchy of evil teams. At the bottom is Team Star, and the gap between Team Flare and Team Star is huge since Team Star is just shockingly bad. I don't even get what these guys want yet, boys, but I guess their plan will unravel as we journey on. And by the way, we have some shout outs to give since in the last episode, we asked you all to give us the most interesting fact. That's right, Joe, we received so many different facts, but I got to choose the best one, mainly because I didn't let the other two have a chance to look. But anyway, our shout out goes to this fellow. I chose this because I loved the idea of there being four firsts in Pokemon. Donald, don't lie, you fool. You only chose this fact because it has Arceus in it and you're an Arceus simp if that wasn't already apparent to anyone. Yeah, so no thanks to Donald. Obama and I didn't get a chance to look at the other facts, but for our next shout out, please let us know which Pokemon was your first shiny you caught. And this time we won't let Donald choose, and I hope to God, no pun intended, that no one found a shiny Arceus. Yeah, another good shout out idea from Joe there. Let us know which shiny you first caught, we'll pick the one we like the most. But anyway, back to the game, Joe, look. We're teaming up with Serena again to fight Team Flair, and let's hope she's actually useful. I find it quite rude that you two are banning me from taking part in our viewer shout outs, but I shall accept this L for now. 
And look, boys, Serena caught an esper. A viewer actually commented that we should use one, but I don't know, what do you two think? I don't really know much about Esper, Donny, so I shall leave that decision up to Obama. Right now, I'm concentrating on this battle because my shoulders are going to be carrying Serena's shit team LMAO. Well, I think we should ask our viewers, since that would be more fun, but our team is already kind of built if you think about it, and anyway, I don't care about Esper. All I want is Eveltal. I can't wait to use that Pokémon. Yeah, Eveltal is a legendary that I don't see getting talked about much, Obama. But it's so cool, and Oblivion Wing, which is its signature move, is like a huge death ray that just obliterates everything. If Judgment didn't exist, then that would be my favorite move for sure. You know, they say that Giratina is supposed to be the devil, but it never actually did anything bad in the anime and movies. It instead tried to protect the world. And in the games, it saved Dialga and Palkia. But Eveltal literally went on a rampage and turned people into stone. Well, yeah, Eveltal basically killed everyone and turned them into stone. And if Xerneas wasn't there, then they'd have stayed like that forever. That was the Diancy movie you gave everyone a rundown of Donald in our Omega Ruby playthrough. I like that movie because we got to see all the starter Pokemon fully evolved. All right, boys, all that aside, I beat those grunts with Serena and she was actually quite decent, surprisingly. But anyway, we're in here to find some scientist who's gone off gallivanting for fossils or something. Yeah, here's the fucking nerd himself staring at rocks. I mean, how boring a life must you have to find this interesting? Staring at a bunch of rocks, I mean, seriously. Hey, Donald, that was quite rude of you to call this guy a nerd. First of all, we're actually here to learn more about mega evolution. And secondly, I loved looking for fossils in my youthful days. The feeling you get when you hold life that's set in stone literally for over a million years is amazing. Yeah, I agree with Obama. It's so cool to see what life was like a million plus years ago. But anyway, boys, since we completed that little side quest, we can finally leave Ambrett Town via the aquarium here and head towards our next gym battle. First of all, Joe, I don't know why you're so happy about fossilized animals when you were still alive the time they all were. And secondly, that was the worst aquarium I have ever seen. There was no exhibits at all. Okay, yeah. Why the hell didn't they put any Pokemon in the aquarium for us to see? I mean, even in black and white, too, there was fishy swimming in that tunnel thing in Undella Town. But in this game, people are literally just staring at water and seaweed. Yeah, sometimes I feel like with these newer games, it's two steps forward, but one step back, Obama El Mau. Either way, we never have to visit that shit town again. And I just want to say, this is probably one of the longest routes in any Pokemon game. Well, maybe not the longest route, but it definitely felt like it, Donald. Also, since you read all the comments, what was the view on using a Sylveon? Ah, uh, yeah, well, our lovely viewers let us know that we can catch Eevee on Route 10, which I can't even remember where that is. I don't think we're even close to it yet, but at this point, do what you want, Joe. Just don't name it something stupid. Yeah, Route 10 is a little whiles away, Donald. And I'm proud of you for getting over this pink phobia of yours and letting us use Sylveon. Not that we'd have cared either way. That's exactly why I told Joe, I don't care either Obama since you were just gonna overrule me, and my only condition is you name it something amazing and which I will like. Like I said earlier, Donald, just trust me, bro. And look, boys, we're getting so close to Sillage City now. If it wasn't for this moronic trainer and her three water Pokemon, I'd have already got there and even beaten the gym. That reminds me, Joe, you should check out the clothes shop now and then. I can't remember if there's one in this town, but otherwise, when we make our way back to Lumios, we should go shopping and get some of Obama's so-called mad drips. Oh yeah, other than Eveltal. That's my other main excitement for this game. Me and one viewer who I apologize for, but I can't remember their name, told us to get the best clothes. Okay, well here we are, boys, finally made to Sillage City for what felt like an eternity to get to. And other than the gym, is there anything important we need to do in this town? Probably nothing important, Joe, and no one cares anyway, because all that matters is destroying this loser in the gym and becoming the top G. Ignore him, Joe. I think the gym is the only important thing for us to do here anyway. The next few towns is where things start to pick up for us story-wise, and anyway, this gym will be an absolute cakewalk, even for you. All right, thank God, Obama, because I really CBA to do any more pointless side quests like in Ambrett Town. Ah, uh, check it out, Joe. This is who you'll be facing in the gym soon. And look, he was kind enough to give you the HM for strength, which means we might need a HM slave. Here we go again, everyone, Donald Trump wants a slave. Joe, oh my fucking God, stop with that shit, you pansy-faced donkey. 
Okay, well, in other news, here's the gym boys, and it's literally built into a cliff face, which I think is quite cool to begin with, but let's have a look-see at what the inside will be like. LML, Joe Biden rock climbing is literally a death sentence in of itself, Obama. I mean, if he fell off these with his arthritis hands and fingers, then that'll be the end of him, and I guess I'll have to take control of our country again and get my second term as president. Just so you know, Donald, I've got it written in my will that you shall never be released from prison under any circumstances, including a zombie apocalypse or meteorite storm. Basically, any eventuality is covered. Yeah, well, if you turn into a zombie, Joe, I'll keep you as my pet in a shed like Sean does with his friend in Sean of the Dead. I'll have you all locked up and visit you now and then to feed you my scraps. Knowing you, there won't be any scraps left for Joe Donald, but anyway, we should give Joe some advice for this gym, which will basically be filled with rock types, plus the occasional bug and dragon type, too, actually. Bet you didn't see that coming. Actually, I did know that Obama, because of the tyrant we used in Omega Ruby, but other than that, I have no idea what to expect in this gym, except I'm glad we have this frogadier with water pulse. This thing is already slaying everything in here. Hey, that kid had a relicanth. I love that ancient fishy Pokemon, and we never caught one in the end in our Pokemon Omega Ruby playthrough, but you need them to unlock the Regitrio. Yeah, one of those and a Whale Lord Donald. I mean, we already had one of those actually since we had you. Haha, <laughs> so funny, Joe, just beat this fucking gym, will you? And actually, I just remembered something really important. We need to announce, boys. Go on then, Donald, give your announcement whilst I destroy this trainer and her weak Pokemons. I wish this place could be more challenging, but right now it's literally a mass slaughter which is occurring. Well, Joe, it was actually regarding the ultra movie video we said we'd make for everyone, which was gonna be a combination of all our other movies put into one video. However, YouTube does not allow a video to exceed the 12 hour mark, and if we combined all our current movies, it would go well over that limit. Actually, that is quite an important announcement, Donald, so well done for bringing this to my attention. As our leader, I shall inform our viewers that instead of that long-ass video, we'll just have to continue making standard movies after every series, and we apologize for this news, but blame YouTube and not us. I think we should blame Joe for it, Obama. Everything is usually his fault, so I don't see why this can't be his fault either. Donald, how is YouTube setting an upload limit my fault? I suggest you use your time in prison to write strongly worded emails to Google and tell them how you feel. At least you won't be bored then, LMAO. Because I just like winding you up, Joe, and it's so easy to get a reaction from you as well. But anyway, look, you made it to the top of this cliff thing, so now prepare yourself to battle the gym leader, and I still don't know who he is. I think his name is Grant Donald, and this is one of the very few battles which I think Joe wouldn't need to actually prepare for at all. It's so easy he could even beat it with his eyes closed. All right, to prove I could beat this with my eyes closed, boys, look. I actually closed them and took my headphones off so I don't get any sound cues either. OMG, he's actually going to try battle this gym with his eyes closed. Joe, if you do this, I won't wind you up for the rest of this episode, bro. Wow, okay, Joe, you just took out Amora, which was his first Pokemon. Now he's sending out his second one, which is the Tyrant. Okay, watch me spam another water pulse then, boys. This guy is going down faster than I took down youngster Joey way back on Route 1. Holy fuck, you actually beat him with your eyes closed, Joe. What the hell, I'm actually impressed and also stunned you did that. And that's why I'm the champion of three regions now again, Donald, and you're not. I am so goaded. I bet I could beat the entire Elite Four and the champion, whoever it is, with my eyes closed too. Joe, if you keep your eyes closed during the champion battle, you'll never find out who it is, you dumbass. Even though we've already basically told you like three times. I couldn't care less, Obama. I just did something Donald will never do, and that makes me so happy. You two should be proud of me. Hang on one sec, Joe. How did you know where Water Pulse was in the move list and also which buttons to press to get to the move selection screen? There is no way you memorized all that with your poor excuse of a brain. Donald, let's not get bogged down with all the hows and whys and whatnots. All that matters is you saw me with your own two eyes beat this gym with my two eyes closed, and that's all that matters. Joe, you're such a little cheater, holy hell. If you don't tell me how you did it, then I won't accept you won this battle with your eyes shut, even if I saw it happen. Donald, if I tell you how I did it, then you'll just do the same when it's your turn to play, and your ego is already the size of Jupiter, so let's not make it any bigger, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, we'll see about that, Joe. Remember, I'm gonna be playing black and white, too. 
So by the time we get to those games, I will have figured it out. If you two are quite finished, we need to head north now, Joe, to the next town. And I have no idea what it is because I can't remember for shit, but what I do know is there's no gym there. That's fine, Obama. I may as well give whoever the next gym leader is a chance to prepare themselves for the slaughter which is coming their way. I hope they get their affairs in order before Joe Biden arrives. Hey, Joe, look, we're on Route 10 already. And you two were saying it was a whiles away, which means you can go hunt for that Eevee now if you like. Wow. I'm surprised you actually reminded Joe to look for it, Donald, since you were so against us using Sylveon. Well, Obama, I am not happy about it because pink makes me sick, kind of like that snubble does, but I am amazed we have yet to use an evolution at all. So since we're here in Callus, we may as well start with using the newest one and then work backwards. If we had a choice, then I would actually prefer to use Umbreon and a shiny one at that, since it's the best Eevee and also it's blue like our party, right, Obama? Right, Joe. That's another rare occasion where I will agree with you on the best evolution, Joe. Leave a comment down below letting us know which evolution is your favorite. And I am sure many will pick Sylveon just to piss me off, but whatever. I guarantee that by the end of this series, you'll love Sylveon Donald, and along with Umbreon, it'll be your favorite. If it's not, then I will let you play two games in a row, but you have to be honest about what you think of it. All right, deal, Obama. I promise to be honest with you, and I promise to keep my promise as well and not pretend. And also, how rare is this Eevee anyway? We haven't even encountered one yet. Yeah, I know, right, Donald? I'm gonna go up a bit and check out the grass and see if there's anything we can find there. Otherwise, I'll have a look off screen later on. Knowing my luck, its spawn rate will probably be like 1%. Hey, check it out, boys. This trainer had a Solosis. This takes me back to the one we named Donald in Omega Ruby. I really missed that guy. He was so strong and one-shot basically everything. But in the end, we swapped him out for Gengar, which was shiny and could mega evolve. Go check out that playthrough if you haven't already. It was really fun. Yeah, I agree with you, Donald. If Gengar wasn't so easy to get and a shiny one at that, then I'd have definitely kept Reuniclus on our team. It was such a G and never struggled in a battle. I think its counterpart is Gothitel too, which is one we could use in black and white too. Absolutely fucking not, Obama. I will never use Gothitel. It's so ugly and freaks me the hell out. Gothitel looks like the cross between an emo person and a clown. Two things I find terrifying. Hello, you two. Look what I just found. Yeah, we saw Joe, and we also saw you fail to catch it as well. And like I said earlier, I couldn't care less about this idea of yours. I'm more surprised with the fact that you managed to remember to buy great balls, Joe. That's the more impressive than you beating Grant with your eyes closed. And he actually caught it on his second try. Wow, but Obama is right, Joe. You remembering to buy the balls is definitely more impressive to me than beating the gym with no eyes. You're only saying that, Donald, because you still haven't worked out how I did it, and just for this constant bitching from you, here's what we shall be naming our Eevee Elmau. Hang on, Joe, I missed all of that. What the hell did you name it, bro? Oh, look at all these lovely stones perfectly placed around here, Obama. We should get some of these for the White House gardens, don't you think? Joe, don't act like a little shit and ignore me. I know you can hear me even if you're a billion years old, you fool. Now spill and tell me what you named that Eevee. Looks like you'll have to wait and find out, Donnie. It's not strong enough for me to use yet, and I like watching you suffer and testing your patience. You're testing way more than my patience, Joe. I'm very upset by this development. Boo hoo, go cry me a river, Donald, and now back to what's going on in this battle. I can't believe this team flare grunt decided to ambush me out of nowhere because he's still salty. I beat him about 10 minutes ago. You know, I think Golbot is the universal standard Pokemon, which is used by all evil teams, boys. I swear every single team uses one, but they never evolve it into a Crobat for some reason. If they did, it would make things a little more fun. I think it's because Golbat is so easy to come across Obama, and you need to have a high level friendship with it to evolve Golbat into Crobat, and being an evil team, I think the Pokemon are more used as tools than as partners. So yeah, that's why they'll never use Crobat. Wow, Donald, that explanation was probably one of the best things that's ever come out of your mouth, and it actually made sense, too. Everything I say makes sense, Joe. It's not my fault your pea-sized brain isn't able to understand my supreme words. And by the way, you can't even understand half the things that come out of your own mouth, so don't give me that BS. Okay, Joe, looks like we have another Team Flare battle, and by the looks of it, they all seem to be in the surrounding area for some reason. Here's another lecture from Professor Donald for you two about another observation I've made. Oh, yay! I love lectures with Professor Donald. Joe, shut up. 
And have you guys noticed that the games generally follow the story of the anime, but in this game, Team Flare is after Eviltal or Xerneas, but not Zygarde, whereas in the anime, they're after only Zygarde for some reason? Well, actually, Donald, in the black and white anime, Team Plasma doesn't even care about Zekrom or Kyrem, but only Rashiram, so it's not only in this game that they don't follow the anime storyline. Okay, but in black and white too, it's all about Kyrem, so why didn't they add Kyrem in the anime as well? Because Kyrem has his own movie, Donald, and I loved that movie. It had Keldeo in it, remember, and he has to spar with Kyrem to become a sword of justice with the other three dog legendaries, which seem like ripoffs of Entei, Raikou, and Suicune El Mao. Yeah, Terrakian and the other two aren't particularly my favorites either, Joe, but that movie was pretty cool. And I liked how they didn't make Kai Rim the bad guy, but instead he tests other Pokemon to see if they're strong enough. I bet Kai Rim could beat Arceus in a duel, Donald. Obama, if you're trying to wind me up, then tough titties because it's not working. You know as well as I do that Arceus beats all and that's that. OMG boys, there's another grunt here. What the hell are they all doing in this area? All there is around here is a bunch of dumb rocks and that's it. Well, Joe, in the X and Y anime, nothing of importance actually happens in this area but I won't spoil anything for you since you haven't played this game. See, you like testing my patience and all the other shit you said earlier, but I'm such a good friend, I never spoil anything for you. Hey, this is a new Pokemon we never see evil teams use. I actually like Gulpin a lot, but I've never used one properly. Because it's a piece of shit Pokemon Obama. It literally has the worst move pool, and if we used one, then it would die constantly. I am totally against using that green fungus-looking Pokemon. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit, Donald. Swalot can learn so many moves by TM. It can even learn Earthquake and Shadow Ball, as well as most of the elemental punch moves. It basically has a counter to all types, even Dragon with Ice Beam. It's really good. All right, well, Joe, you made it to Geosenge Town, where shit's probably about to go down, so I say we end this episode here for now. Good shout, Obama. I'm not in the mood for one of Joe's dumb lectures. He's trying to be like me. But anyway, thanks for watching everyone. And please remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Yeah, Professor Biden is signing out. Thanks for watching everyone and see you in the next one. Alrighty, everyone, welcome to part five of our Pokemon X and Y playthrough. Yo, 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 everyone. Today we're aiming to make it to Shalor City and hopefully Joe will be able to take on the gym there. So please remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy our content. That's right, Obama. And we want to thank you all for the amazing comments in our last video. So many of you told us which was the first shiny Pokemon you ever caught. And there were so many comments to read. It took a good afternoon to get through them all, but it was worth it. Yeah, so many of you remember that special moment when you encounter a shiny Pokemon for the first time. It was really lovely to read. Yeah, so for this episode, please let us know in the comments what your all-time favorite Pokemon is and why. And for those whose favorite is Arceus, you'll be Okay, I'm going to interrupt Donald here and say that if anyone's favorite Pokemon is Arceus, so we shall be ignoring that, that comment. Otherwise, the moron here will hijack that comment and probably pin it as well as ignore all the other lovely viewers who comment. Listen here, Obama. Arceus should get the same treatment as any other Pokemon our viewers comment about, so the fact you're banning it is ridiculous. This isn't a competition battle scenario, you know. Yeah, talking of battles, I've randomly been challenged to battle this Lucario out of nowhere. This is the same one that was harassing me earlier as well. What the hell? This Lucario has the hots for you, Joe. Whenever he sees you, he can't get enough of you. I bet he's stalking you, ha ha ha. Okay, I think we should ask our viewers about this situation since we're here, Donald. Basically, Joe, this Lucario is gonna be ours, but I wasn't sure whether or not to use it in this team. I mean, we haven't used one before, so we could now. I think we should, Obama, because when will we get the chance to use Lucario again in a playthrough and have it Mega Evolve, which is the whole point of this game anyway? Hang on, Donald, did you just see that? See what, Obama? What the hell are you on about? Yeah, uh, Obama, what you chatting, bro? I guess it was nothing. Now, what were you just saying, Donald, before I cut you off again? I was saying how using Lucario in this playthrough is the best option since we, first of all, don't have to evolve a Riolu which means less work for Joe, and it can mega evolve, which is the main point of this game. You know what, Donald? Those are some great points to make there, and I totally agree with you. And I think you two should keep discussing this topic and don't mind me. Well, I'm gonna need to put a stop to our conversation right here, Joe, because Frogadier just died, and you know what that means? 
I can't remember what that means. What are you on about Obama? Please keep talking. Joe, what in the actual fuck is this? LMFAO, so that's why you wanted us to keep talking, Joe. I see you had the perfect name for that Eevee you caught in the last episode all along, and I think this name is absolutely perfect for it. Especially since Donald insists on being named after a Pokemon in each of our playthroughs. Yeah, named after cool Pokemon like Arceus or Yveltal Obama. Not an Eevee, and on top of this disgrace, it's a girl one too. How can you name a girl Eevee after me, Joe? Fine, I can change it, Donald. How does Donita sound? I think that would be even better, actually. Joe, you're not naming it Donita either, holy hell. Name it something else, or when you're not looking, I'll release the little shit. And it's not like you'll remember you even caught one in the first place unless Obama reminds you. Which is something I will absolutely do, Donald, if you release that poor little Eevee. And if anything that Eevee is suffering by having your name compared to you being named after an Eevee. I can't believe this is happening. Joe, if you're gonna go on with this little charade, then at least go back to Route 10 and catch a male one for fuck's sake. See, now you're being a misogynist again, Donald. Why don't you embrace this little development, and this is also to teach you to start liking Sylveon, because I can see it becoming our MVP. That's the biggest bunch of BS I have ever heard, Joe. We're gonna have Eveltal on our team, and you're already saying a stupid little pink dog thing is gonna be our MVP? How much of that cocaine has gone up your nose since our last episode? I was on your side up until you went and said Sylveon is going to be the MVP, Joe, because as much as I like it, it's just not going to be our MVP. But it will definitely be a valuable member, and we're sticking with the name Donald for it. And if you release it, Donnie, then I'll catch another female one for Joe. Well, it's not like we're going to get Sylveon anytime soon, is it, Obama? I have to play mini games or whatever with it. And then it has to learn a fairy type move, too, on level up, which shouldn't be too difficult, but still. This feels more like a chore than anything else. You know I agree with Joe that evolving this Pokemon definitely feels like a chore. I'd rather watch Joe train up three dragon types than watch him train up this one, Eevee. You're only saying that, Donald, because you don't want us to use Sylveon, so shut your mouth. Hey, I just realized we won't be using Lucario either since the next three members of our team are gonna be Gumi, Hone Edge, and Iveltal. And then that's our team complete, isn't it, boys? Oh yeah, Joe's right there, Obama. Seems like no Lucario for us then, which is fine anyway, because everyone loves Gumi, and I thought you said you'd get us a shiny hone edge. What's going on with that then? Yeah, I asked my friend Donald, who is actually a real person, and not some made-up Russian fellow like you're always going on about, and by the next episode we should have our hone edge named Arthur. It's probably the Pokemon I'm looking forward to the most, out of all our playthroughs, actually. Hey, look, boys, it's another cave, and hang on, isn't this the cave which has a multiverse in it? I remember in the anime, Ash, Serena, Bonnie, and Clement fell into the mirrors and an alternate form of themselves came out the other side. Yeah, that's right, Joe. Maybe you can fall into one of the mirrors and we can get an alternate form of you. I think Donald would appreciate that, too. Yeah, maybe the new Joe Biden will be a Republican like me, LMFAO, and not have dementia and generally be an all-around cool dude that we can all get along with and not bully because he's so pathetic. And what if an alternate Donald Trump came out who was a Democrat and not a fatty and also not the biggest bully on the planet? That's also a possibility, you know, Donnie. Well, Joe, that wouldn't happen because I would go through every single universe where I exist and take all my counterparts out. So there's only one Donald J. Trump. Then everything will be perfectly balanced or whatever it was Thanos said. That's all well and good, Donald. But what if your counterparts in the other universes are also planning the same thing? I mean, they're all you, so the chances of them thinking like you are also very high. Then what will you do? Well, Obama, I'd tell you exactly what I'd do. I would host a huge battle royale for all the Donald Trumps to fight, and whoever is the last one standing will be the one to fight me to the death. Hey, I'd even pay to see that Donnie. I'd grab me some popcorn and soda and maybe a glass of Hennessy and sit back and watch a bunch of Donalds fight gladiator style. Hey, look, you two. Since we're talking about Donald so much, let me take you back to the beginnings of our Pokemon black and white playthrough when we use the Pokemon we're battling right now. Salute to Throw, which we named Donald back in the day. Yeah, that Throw was one tough cookie, Obama, and I do miss him and wonder what he's up to these days. I mean, we did release him, if I remember correctly. More than that dumb Throw Donald is our Toge Kiss, which you rudely released in our Heart Gold playthrough. That was probably the most sad I've ever felt in my life. 
Now that's a Pokemon I wonder about a lot. Tough shit, Joe. We got a Dragonite, which is way better. But anyway, back to X and Y. This Pokemon Halucha is amazing. And if we didn't already have our team built, then I'd use it. Although we already have Charizard as our flying type. Ash's one in the anime was goaded, and I agree, Donald. However, we will be using Yveltal, which is a flying type too, but that gets a pass because it's a legendary. Yeah, it's a really strong Pokemon, and I have a question regarding that. Do you think Pokemon which can't evolve get a higher stats right off the bat because of the fact that they can't evolve? Hey, you make a fair point there, Joe. Remember, our Heracross was already amazingly strong to begin with, so I think you're right about that. We can't really include legendary Pokemon in this conversation because they're legendary and already really strong to begin with. Well, here we are everyone finally at Shalor City. No thanks to Joe, we got lost in the damn cave so had to edit a lot of that out, but anyway. Let's rejoice as we can finally take on Karina for our third gym badge. Yeah, to the surprise of absolutely no one. The Muppet went round in circles three times without even realizing it, but regardless, Joe, don't make a mess of the gym battle. I suggest we do some training with our Charmeleon because it will learn wing attack then. Before I can even do that, Donald, I just got ambushed by these two morons again. They continue to jump me out of nowhere and I'm getting fed up with it now. But anyway, they're talking about how we should go find some fellow called the Mega Evolution Guru. If this guy we're gonna find knows so much about Mega Evolution, then why can't the professor go talk to him instead of making us go all the way here? Obama, you're always the one asking the right questions, but sadly for you, we shall never know the answer, and regardless, it'll be good for Joe to learn more about Mega Evolution so he can become a better trainer like me and you. Well, Donald, I could beat this game without even using Mega Evolution if I wanted, just FYI. But I choose not to because it's fun, and it's my first time using it as well since Obama never let me have a go in Omega Ruby. Hey, look, boys, Tierno is back, and he says he has something for you, Joe. Nice, he gave us the intriguing stone, which could be a keystone or an evolution stone, Joe. How nice of him. He's the only friend who's actually been useful for us so far in this playthrough. Wow, look at that tower, boys. It looks really scary and intimidating, and that's where the guru is, apparently. It looks like a place Dracula could live instead of a guru. Joe, stop being a little bitch and pull your big boy pants up and storm the place demanding to see this self-proclaimed guru. It's about time we get to use Mega Evolution and all we need is to see if that stone Tierno got us was an actual keystone or not. This place does have an ominous feeling to it though. I guess it could be the lighting, but either way, Joe, check the place out and then head through that green door with the Mega symbol on it. Hey, that was an awesome looking statue of Mega Lucario right there in the middle, boys. If we keep the one you said will be given, then it'll look like that when we Mega Evolve. No, Joe, because our team is better without Lucario, and look, the guru here is Karina's grandfather. Yeah, that's right, Donald. He has a name, but I can't remember what it is yet. Not that it's even important, because I think we're about to get a lecture about Mega Evolution Boys. Remember, I'm a professor too, Obama, and I bet I could give everyone a better lecture than this idiot can with his ridiculous-looking eyebrows too. I mean, look at them. What kind of fashion choice is that? The funny thing is, he hasn't even started talking about Mega Evolution yet, Donald. All he said is that he's the guru, which is quite egotistical first of all and second of all. I agree with you, Donald, about his stupid eyebrows. His eyebrows remind me of an Alolan Golem, if you all know what that looks like. But hey, look, Joe, the whole gang is together now. We haven't been with all of our friends like this since we left for our journey. Yeah, it's actually quite nice that our gang is here like this Obama. Look how close they all seem. And if you think about it, we only became friends with them a few hours ago. If you count the in-game time we've been playing for LMAO. Look, the guru is finally imparting his mega evolution knowledge to us boys. And he's basically telling me everything I already know, the dumbass. We saw all this in Omega Ruby when Obama played. Well, actually, Joe, we should have played this game before Omega Ruby, as far as continuity goes in the story. But either way, you're right in that he's not telling us anything new. Basically, you gotta have a Mega Stone and Keystone and then boom. If that was your attempt at giving a Pokemon lecture, Obama, then that was shockingly bad. But how comes this guy is still talking about Mega Evolution crap when we already know everything? Hang on, Donald, before you keep ranting, look. I am randomly being challenged to a battle with Serena for some reason which makes no sense. Who the fuck starts a battle challenge in the middle of a Pokemon lecture? Well, Joe, this is where Professor Donald Trump can step in because Obama forgot the most crucial step 
when it comes to mega evolution, which is something we didn't even talk about in Omega Ruby. But what you need is a strong bond with your Pokemon for it to mega evolve. Yep, good point there, Donald. Also, I think we have to battle Serena to see which of you has the strongest bond with their Pokemon Joe, which means basically whoever wins this battle has that bond. Not that it means anything anyway in this game. What do you mean by that Obama? Let me step in here, Joe, because I know what he means. Basically, in Sword and Shield and other newer games, our Pokemon will do things like tough it out for us if they're about to get one shot in a battle, which is only possible if we have a high friendship with them. Wow, yeah, that is what I meant, Donnie. I really like that feature because it feels like our Pokemon actually care for us and want us to be proud of them, even though we all know they're really just a bunch of colored polygons. Yeah, it would make sense for that to be a feature in this game, since Mega Evolution is all dependent on friendship. But regardless, here we are anyway. And look, Serena caught herself an Absol, what the hell? Well, I guess this is going to be her Mega Pokemon eventually, then boys since this thing can mega evolve when she gets the keystone for it. And what do you two think about Mega Absol? I think it suits Serena well, Joe, but that's about it. I really don't like Mega Absol, but I love the normal one. I think it just looks stupid when it randomly grows some wings and looks like a fucking unicorn. Yeah, I also get unicorn vibes off Mega Absol too, Donald. I mean, that blade on its head already looks like a horn, kinda. I remember when I first saw this thing in the Hoenn anime series. And I thought it was a legendary Pokemon with the way they were portraying it. It looks so strong and mysterious. Joe, you're so stupid you would think that Bidoof is a legendary Pokemon if you didn't have us to tell you, you fool. Hey, I bet there's at least one person on this planet who thinks Bidoof deserves the status as legendary. I mean, the official Pokemon YouTube channel even made a whole song about Bidoof. I remember that song, Joe. It was an absolute banger. And look, Serena evolved her Chespin into Quilladin. This is one chonky boy for sure. Chonky is an understatement here, Obama. This thing is so round that we could use it as a bowling ball. I bet that's how it moves about by rolling itself up into a ball. Yeah, it rolls around like a panda would, Donald, and it's so cute when they do that. Okay, well, I think this is the third time our Frogadier has died now in this one episode, boys and Donald. You kept going on about how it would never die and is immortal and basically a god, and now look. Don't you dare blame Frogadier, Obama. It receives commands from its trainer, which in this case is the apparent champion, Joe Biden, and he's the one who went and got it killed. And by the way, I bought him some revives off screen too, and he's not even used them. You were the one who said it would never fail me though, Donald, and without Charmeleon, I would have lost that battle. And I actually do use the revives after the battle has been won, just so you know. Joe, the whole point is to use them during the battle too, you dumbass. You've been playing long enough to know that, and I don't know why you're not doing it. It takes five seconds to use them seriously. I know you're making valid points there, Donald, and I will take the title of dumbass, but mostly I find it so much effort to waste a turn reviving a Pokemon when we can just use another one to kill the opponent. The only time I feel like it's worth using revives is like when we do champion battles. You know what Donald Joe makes a good point there, and let's be honest, the only reason you're upset with him is because you were raving about how Frogadier will never die, and then it does three time already. Well, I will admit that I'm upset because my point would have stood true if Joe had only used a Hyper Potion or something on our Frogadier. All right, boys, those idiots would not shut up. So I decided to make my way to the gym whilst my friends kept talking. And apparently this battle is more than just a standard gym battle. Yeah, that's right, Joe. I think this is more of a test from that mega evolution guru, or I should say, Karina's grandfather. And if we win, we also happen to get a gym battle at the end of it too. We'll easily win Obama, and also isn't this such a cool gym too? It's full of grind rails and other skaters just going around having fun. But to get to Karina Joe, I think you have to battle three of these trainers. This gym is gonna be a cakewalk for me like the last one, Donnie don't worry. Alrighty Joe, we'll see about that. This trainer has led off with a sock first, and we saw its counterpart earlier in throw. And well, this is a fighting type gym, so I hope you took my advice to train up Charmeleon. Okay, well, holy shit, that sock almost took us out in one shot there, Joe. You said this was gonna be a cakewalk, and this is the first battle here, and it's already going to hell. Well, we all know Joe isn't gonna bother healing, and you're lucky that Frogadier will most likely outspeed everything in this gym. Joe, meaning we'll get more attacks in. Yeah, Frogadier came in clutch there just now. 
and my water pulse took out that sock whilst just about hanging on, and now this trainer is sending out the tanky Hariyama. Hariyama is like the cooler version of Snorlax, don't you two think? First of all, it would absolutely slap Snorlax into oblivion since fighting is super effective against normal. And all Snorlax does is sleep too kind of like you, Joe. Yeah, well, Hariyama is about to meet its maker, Donald. And by the way, I actually did take your advice and do some training. Although I might have got a bit carried away, I really just wanted to train Eevee up more than anything, to be honest. That fucking Eevee has done jack shit in this episode so far, Joe. You've barely used it, and I feel its only purpose was to piss me off. I will neither confirm nor deny that for Joe Donnie. But anyway, on to the next trainer, Joe. I don't actually think we have to battle all the trainers in this gym to reach Karina too, by the way. God, I hope so, Obama. It's so boring watch Joe battle sometimes. He doesn't provide the same entertainment as you or I do. I'd rather watch paint dry. Donald, you just come barging into every battle with your arms flailing about like some sort of maniac, thinking you're the top G when you're not, and anyway, out of the three of us, Obama is the only one who's actually never lost one battle. I'm sure his time is coming, Joe. Just you wait, and now look. It's a Poncham. And this Pokemon was in the anime. Serena used one, and we also got a request to use one from one of our viewers. And it just took out Frogadier again, Donald. That makes this the fourth death now. And meanwhile, Donald the Eevee and Charmeleon haven't died once. It's clear who the MVPs are already. Nah, this is some proper bullshit now. Joe, you're doing this on purpose. Aren't you just to make Frogadier look bad as well as me and make this stupid Eevee look like it's some sort of god? I'm just playing how I always do Donnie. And anyway, this Eevee is named after you and I thought you would have liked to be considered a god since you always love it when people worship you. Yeah, I want statues built of me, Joe, looking like I do right now as a human. Not as an Eevee, thank you very much. I think you mean as a Sylveon Donald because that's what we will be using as soon as this thing evolves and then we're stuck with it for the rest of the game. And hey, look, you did really good battling and winning against this Poncham. You know, I feel like Poncham is just a ripoff of Teddy Ursa and Ursaring. I mean, they're both bears and basically look the same, except one is a grizzly bear and the other is a glorified panda bear. Well, Joe, you moron, they're based of actual bears in the real world. And more than one bear species does exist, you know? With your logic, Cub Chew is a ripoff too when it's clearly a polar bear. But out of all the bear Pokemon, Stuffle is my favorite and beware. Oh, hell yeah. Donnie Stuffle is the most adorable one ever and I loved its little story arc in the Sun and Moon anime series. And beware was an absolute gangster too. Ooh, looky look boys, our Charmeleon is finally evolving into Charizard, which means we can destroy Karina with our Mega Charizard Y, and I can finally prove to you, Donald, that it's better than X. Okay, well it's just not Joe, and also we still don't have our Keystone either, so you'll have to wait a bit longer if you want to prove anything to me, buddy. And anyway, I think you'll be able to take on Karina now too. Yeah, and look, perfect timing, Donald. Charizard is learning Wing Attack, which will be the move to destroy this gym. And the best thing is, it has like 35 power points for me to use. Okay, Joe, I hope you're prepared for this battle other than using Charizard. You have to prepare for every eventuality, remember. And I can't even remember what her team is, so you're going in blind, but I believe in you. She came in with a flashy entrance there, Joe, like some sort of battle dance to throw you off. But don't worry, it's basically a three versus one battle when you have Obama and myself backing you up. Okay, thanks for the moral support there, my boys. And she's leading off with a Pokemon I've never used and know nothing about either. So I'm gonna stick to my plan and use Wing Attack. As you just saw, Joe, Mean Fu here always tends to use Fake Out and it did quite a bit of damage to us right off the bat there. Fake Out is kinda like the ability Sturdy and that its sole purpose is to piss the player off. OMG, imagine a Pokemon with Fake Out and Sturdy at the same time. That would be the worst thing ever, and I would have a word with whichever smartass came up with that idea at Game Freak. Okay, Donald, I just revived Hanzo during our battle like you wanted me to, and I only did it as a backup, but now I'm glad I did because this Machoke has Rock Tomb of all moves. Yeah, I did not expect Machoke to have Rock Tomb, but I bet they taught it to Machoke knowing that someone would come in here with a flying type and, well, Karina's strategy worked. Joe, that was the first attack you actually got off on Machoke in the last, like, five minutes, bro. See, if it was me, this battle would have been over by now since I would have healed Charizard right off the bat and then spammed Wing Attack. That would have been my strat anyway. You know, I was actually getting amazed 
because you almost went the whole battle without providing me with any of your opinions, Donald. But that was all just crushed in an instant. You know you love my opinions, Joe, and now look, she's sending out a halucha, and we've dealt with these before, so I expect this to be a clean sweep battle, Joe. Well, this battle certainly didn't go as I expected it to. I thought it would have been a cakewalk, kind of like Grant's was, but this was way harder. And I thought Sherazard would have been useful. Joe, if you're not careful, this halucha is gonna take out Frogadier for like the fifth time now. That is quite bad because this was meant to be the Greninja of all Greninjas and it's so far been worse than the one we used in Omega Ruby. I would like to add that it's not even a Greninja yet, Obama. And I think I did say that when we had Greninja, it would then be the best and MVP. So just give it time and I promise you shall be rewarded, Joe. Well, so far Charizard has been the best of our team, Donald, and then yourself as Evie and finally Frogadier. So I hope you're right about it, living up to what our other one achieved. But anyway, boys, check it out. I beat Karina, and now we have three Jim Kalos badges. Just trust me, Joe, but well done for beating her. And see, you didn't even use Evie in the entirety of that battle, which shows how much faith you had in me. You had absolutely zero faith. Okay, well, on that note, boys, I say we end this episode here for now. It was a longer one than usual, slightly, so we hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Yeah, and in the next episode, we shall be taking her on again, actually, but this time in a mega evolution battle. So get yourself ready for that, Joe. But anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, and have a lovely rest of your week. Bye bye everyone. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to part six of our Pokemon X and Y journey through Kalos. And in today's episode, I have no idea what Joe has planned, but if you enjoy our content, then please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to help support the channel more, then consider becoming a member. Otherwise, over to you, Joe. See, Joe, that's how the intro should be done. You have a lot to learn, my young moronic Padawan. Donald, I'm absolutely not your Padawan and never will be. And also, Obi-Wan never called Anakin a moron either, so that wasn't very nice, was it? But anyway, Obama, in today's episode, we're back at the mega evolution tower place thingy to fight Karina again. Oh yeah, that's right, Joe. You gotta take her on again in a Mega Evolution battle. This will be your first time using your Mega Pokemon, so I hope you're ready for this battle against her. Oh, I'm so ready, Obama, but I'm more ready to be able to finally show Donald the power of Mega Charizard Y. And I just want to say to our viewers that we only ended up using it since lots of people wanted me to use the Y version of Charizard since we used the X version in our Omega Ruby playthrough. Yeah, Joe was actually gonna use Bulbasaur until we switched from X to Y when I got a copy of it for him. So now I want to see how good this other version will be. I already have my doubts, but anyway, Joe, let's see what it's got. Oh, look, that other Lucario is here too, boys. This is where it joins us, Joe, but I can't remember if we have to use it in battle or not. Hey, talking of Lucario Obama, we asked all our lovely viewers to tell us what their favorite Pokemon was in the last episode. And we got hundreds of comments, which was great to read, but the Pokemon which everyone seemed to love the most was in fact Lucario. That's right, Donnie. Lucario was the most popular Pokemon that everyone liked, and we can understand why. It was so cool seeing it for the first time before the Diamond and Pearl anime series and games were announced. I think it first appeared in the Pokemon movie, Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. And that was a damn good movie too, Joe. The Reggie Trio was my favorite because the sounds they made sounded so alien-like and intimidating. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, then check that movie out. Oh shit, boys, this is a one versus one battle. Joe, that Lucario has teamed up with you to fight her one, so make sure you don't make yourself look like a fool and lose, buddy. Hey, it's fine, Donald. I have Swords Dance, and then I'll Mega Evolve and use Power Up Punch and one-shot this guy. This battle will be Karina's downfall. Okay, Joe, whilst you do all that, I want to ask our viewers what their first ever Pokemon game was that they played and how they got into Pokemon 2. So leave a comment down below. We'll start, and the first Pokemon we played was Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Obviously, I played Ruby and Joe, and Obama played Sapphire. Yeah, that's right, Donald, but then who played Emerald? I don't know, Obama, probably that wench Hillary Elamau. Um, excuse me, Donald, what did you just call me? Oh my fucking God, here we go. Hey, hey Hillary. Hillary. Hey, boys, how you all doing? I see Donald as being his fine self as usual. Yeah, Hillary, what do you want? Why are you even here? Well, Donald, I don't have any particular reason for being here. I just thought I'd drop by and say hello to Joe and Obama. 
And you just happen to be here too, I guess. So hello. Yeah, don't try to subliminally condescend me, you fool. I know what your game is, Hillary. You just come in here acting like some big shot, piss me off, and then leave. And it works every single time, LMAO. Anyway, boys, I'm off. I just thought I'd drop by to say hello to you two and my good friend, Grumpy Trumpy. So, bye, guys. See you soon. Yeah, bye, Hillary. You're welcome back here anytime you like. No, you're fucking not. And also, well done, Joe. That battle went exactly like you said it would, although you almost did die. This Lucario is pretty cool, isn't it? Hey, it's always a treat when Hillary shows up to join us, boys, don't you think? Well, I know how you feel, Donald, so Obama can answer that question. But anyway, since I've proven myself to have a strong bond with Pokemon, we can ditch this Lucario in the PC boxes and head off towards the next gym. You know, Joe, why don't we talk about something positive like the newest member of our team, which none of you have even talked about yet? That was meant to be a surprise, you dumbass Donald. But anyway, I did kind of talk about it in the last episode. And I think Joe has it set first in the party, so everyone will get a chance to see the most requested Pokemon for us to use in this playthrough. Yeah, that's right. Obama, I'm about to show it off. And on a side note, I also taught Surf, which we got from Serena just now, to our Frogadier. It's probably the most useful move we'll have on it. Yeah, that was a good move choice, Joe. All we need now is Dark Pulse and Ice Beam, maybe plus Water Shuriken to have the most goaded Greninja ever. Even more than the last one we used in Omega Ruby. Hang on, you two, look. Here is the newest member of our team, a shiny hone edge called Arthur, as requested by one of our viewers. It's currently level one though, since it just hatched from an egg, but it has the adamant nature, and we're gonna spec it out to be an offensive physical attacker. Yeah, when it's fully evolved, this thing is gonna be OP as hell. And also, Aegislash has hands down one of the best shinies in existence. It's just outstanding in every way. You're only saying that Donald because Red is your favorite color, and Aegislash just happens to be red in its shiny form. But regardless, it's definitely up there for sure as one of the goats. Yeah, but it's too weak right now to use in battle. However, after we beat this punk, we should get it up some levels with the EXP share you have on Joe. Oh, I forgot about this fucking EV you named after me, Joe. And listen to this shit. Some of our viewers commented that we should use a shiny Sylveon since I hate pink, but they didn't take into account the fact that shiny Sylveon is blue. Well, Donald, I think that's actually a great idea. A blue Sylveon isn't something we see every day, is it? In fact, I've never seen a shiny Sylveon before. Yeah, and you never will, Joe, because I would rather have a pink Sylveon than a Democratic blue one, holy hell. Wow, and no one saw that coming, Donnie. Personally, I would love to see a blue Sylveon too, but I think we've wound Donald up enough for now, Joe, by using Sylveon all by itself, so let's give him a small break. Thank you, Obama. To be honest, I needed a break as soon as I heard Hillary's voice, and that was only like three minutes into this episode, but anyway, I'm so grateful. And now back to the game. This Eevee is absolute shite. Donald, I know it is right now. I've been playing games with it off camera since recording. All that is super boring, and it's literally just me spamming buttons for hours on end, but hopefully by the next episode, we should have a fully-fledged Sylveon. Whatever you say, Joe, but anyway, everyone here, we are in Coomerine City. And this is one place I forgot about in Kalos, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous, and I'd love to live here by the sea. Me too, Donald. It's a really pretty place here in Kalos. And look, Serena FaceTimed us and wants to have a battle outside this city's gym. Well, she's going to get utterly destroyed, Obama. And by the way, we need to teach Solar Beam to our Charizard as soon as possible, because when we Mega Evolve, we have drought. And with that, I will be a literal god. I think you're going a bit far there, Joe. The only god here is Arceus, and he doesn't approve of you, bucko. Oh, look, it's two people we haven't seen for a good minute, boys. It's the Professor and Diantha again. And look, they're talking about Mega Evolution. Yeah, I still don't see the point in her, Obama. She just walks around in her Gucci outfit or whatever that is she's wearing, acting like some big shot supermodel when she's like a four out of 10. Joe, what the hell is wrong with you, bro? That's clearly a Chanel she's wearing. And also she's a solid nine in my book. And don't you even think about making a stormy joke? I'm more interested in what the professor just gave me, Donald. We finally got the HM for fly, which I'll teach to Charizard and remove wing attack. And by the way, do you two have any tips for the upcoming gym? Anything I should be worried about? Nah, Joe, I think you'll be fine with the next gym. You've been sweeping all the gyms and battles so far. Plus, we have Mega Evolution now, so even if whoever it is takes out most of our team, you don't have an excuse for losing the whole battle. All right, Obama, I trust you on that. And did you just see what Diantha said, boys? 
She has the audacity to challenge me to a battle the next time we meet. Why doesn't she just stick to her acting or whatever else she does and stay away from Pokemon battles? You know, Obama, this whole situation reminds me of when Joe first met Cynthia when we played through Pokemon Platinum, except this time, I'm not worried for him at all. Yeah, this is literally the same situation, Donnie. But I think when Joe finally figures things out, it'll be a mass slaughter. And not for him, LMAO. I have no idea what you two are on about, but look, I'm heading to the gym to go put Serena in her place, which is at the bottom of the food chain. She is going to feel the almighty power of my Charizard Y, and there is nothing she can do to stop me. Holy hell, Joe, even more important than this battle, you just found a sky plate. What the hell is that thing doing randomly on a cliff edge? I don't know, Donald, and I don't care. Look, Serena just said she wants me to use Mega Evolution in our battle with her. It's like she wants to get destroyed because she knows at this point she'll never ever win. Well, we can keep that sky plate Donald for later if you want to put it on anything like Eveltal, for example. But anyway, let's watch Joe and his new best friend take out Serena and her shitty team. You know, I think the team she had in the anime was way better than this one. Yeah, she never used a meow stick in the anime, Obama, and she had a Fennekin too, instead of a Chespin, like she chose here. And she also had that Poncham, which always had sunglasses on, which was clearly a rip-off of Ash's Sandeel, always wearing sunglasses in the black and white anime. You know, Donald, you sound like such a nerd when you talk about Pokemon anime yourself, bro, LMAO. But it's also cute too, so I don't mind. Okay, I think I was just sick in my mouth, Obama. Joe Biden just said I sound cute, and I don't know how to feel about this situation anymore. We'll get a room and sort it out with him, Donald, because I do not give a single fuck. And in other more important news, our hone edge is slowly climbing up the level ladder. I hope by the next episode we can use it properly. And if anyone has a move suggestions, then please comment down below. Yeah, I would love to use it in the next episode too, Obama. But we need to get a Dusk Stone somehow for it to fully evolve. And I saw a viewer comment that they're only available in the post game. Don't worry about that, Joe. Your old pal here has contacts for such situations. And since you brought up the post game, do you two think we should do it? Well, I don't know what the post game is, remember, Donald. But sure, I don't mind. This series is one of our viewers' favorites, it seems. So if they want us to do it, then I shall listen to their command. To be honest, Joe, the post game in this game is quite forgetful. I know Looker is involved, but other than that, I can't remember anything. Either way, we can leave that decision up to our viewers. Both of you be quiet and shut the hell up. The moment we have all been waiting for is here. Our Frogadier is finally evolving into a legendary shiny black Greninja. This is officially the happiest moment of my life. I thought the happiest moment of your life was mowing down the entire Elite Four with your Arceus in Sinnoh Donald. I've never seen you that happy before when you slaughtered their Pokemon. Oh yeah, that was a pretty good day too, Joe. Okay, then this is the second happiest moment of my life then. This is the Pokemon Ash should have had too, since he had that Ash Greninja deal going on. If it was black, it would have been even better. Okay, that would have been super awesome to see Donald. Ash having a black Greninja, but then they would have still left it in Kalos. And the only reason they did that was because Greninja was so OP and they couldn't just leave him back at Professor Oak's lab either. OMG boys, looks like I have to do more physical activities to get to the gym leader in this gym too. What is it with all the gyms in Kalos requiring the contestant to battle the leader only after climbing a literal mountain? They must know you're playing Joe, and since you've kept raving about how good you are and you're the champ of like three regions, maybe they wanted to see if your old bones are worthy of being champion in this region too. Well, Donald, my old bones, as you call them, are about to destroy this gym, and with my amazing luck, it's a grass-type gym too. And I have fire and flying-type moves on Charizard, so this is gonna be easy-peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, yeah, this is definitely gonna be another easy gym battle for you, Joe. I don't know why all the gyms are like this in Kalos. They're so fucking easy, it's honestly, like, what's the point? Yeah, they are Obama, but at least we've forgotten which gym comes next each time. The only gym I remember for sure is the eighth gym, which I won't say so as to not spoil it for Joe, but even that is gonna be a walk in the park. You know, I think after Hone Edge is up to the same level as the rest of our team, I'll do what you did in Omega Ruby and turn the EXP share off Obama, otherwise this is gonna get way too simple.
The only reason I have it on right now is for the sake of time, so we can get videos out to our viewers fast. Well, Joe, it's only like level 18, and it basically has another 18 levels to go before it's on par with the rest of our team. So by the time you get to turn it off, we'd have probably got to like the eighth gym and beaten it too. So what's the point? We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, Donnie. And by the way, do you remember who this gym leader is? I seriously can't remember for the life of me. Oh yeah, it's Ramos Obama. And the only reason I just remembered that is because I kept picturing that Battle Frontier guy who's also a grass type frontier brain from the anime, if anyone can remember what I'm on about. I remember that guy, Donald. He has a Venusaur on his team and he gave Ash a challenge. I remember one of the characters saying that frontier brains are way more tougher than gym leaders. And at this rate, I'd like a challenge. Yeah, navigating these ropes is giving you a more difficult time than battling Joel Mao. How'd you like being Tarzan though? Are you enjoying yourself? Oh, I've got to say, Donald, that I'm actually loving this gym. I know I gave it some shit in the beginning, but out of all the gym puzzles we've done so far, this has to be the best one ever. Boys, did you two just see the name of this Pokemon Ranger we're battling? Her name was Twiggy. Now, have you ever heard anyone name something so ridiculous before? Holy hell. You must really want your child to get bullied if you name them Twiggy. That is the second dumbest name I've ever heard before Obama. Hey, look, boys, it's an executor. Now, this Pokemon got a cool regional form variant in the Alola region, and that one is also part dragon type, if I'm right in saying that. And I love the Alolan one more, too. It looks so funky. Yeah, Alola got some really cool variations, Joe. My favorite is Marowak, which changed to a cool black maroon sort of color and also changed its type from ground to fire and ghost, which is just awesome. Even though this Pokemon is a piece of crap, Raticate got an awesome form change, too, Obama. I think it became a dark type and its color also changed to black. I like that about that region because it felt like older Pokemon got a glow up. Oh shit, boys, look, our Eevee is trying to evolve. But I haven't played with it enough to get a Sylveon, so what the hell is it gonna evolve into if I had left it? Well, it's around level 36, I think, so it could have evolved into an Espeon. I think, Joe, that makes the most sense to me. It can't have been the ones which require a stone since we never used one on it. And it can't be Umbreon since it's not dark right now. Yeah, Espeon makes the most sense to me as well, Donald. Glaceon and Leafeon require us to find a mossy stone or ice mound, I think. And Joe said he hasn't played with Eevee enough for Sylveon yet. But anyway, Joe, here you are at the top of this tower. Let's destroy this guy. OMG, boys, look at this guy. He's an absolute ripoff of the guy we talked about earlier who was the grass-type frontier brain, and I can't remember what his name was either. But those who know who I'm talking about can remind me. You know, Joe, I think Mega Evolving in this gym battle was a bit overkill. There's no way we lose this battle. And if you do, then I'm never letting you play another Pokemon game again. Yeah, Joe, the only Pokemon game we'll let you play if you lose this battle is Pokemon Sleep LMFAO. That game was literally built for you. Joke's on you two. I already have Pokemon Sleep installed and I use it every night and I can't sleep without it. It's the best thing ever and my favorite game. Well, of course he already has it installed, Obama. To the surprise of absolutely no one. That's one game you'll never see me playing, Joe. All right, boys, Ramos's second Pokemon is on the field, and it's Go-Goat. And this Pokemon is one of my favorites as well from Kalos. It was the second new Pokemon we saw in the anime from this region, and we had a viewer suggest it to us, actually. Shame it gets destroyed so easily, though, Joe, but yeah, Go-Goat just looks like one friendly dude, and I loved him in the X and Y anime series. Okay, well done, Joe. You beat this gym as well with absolutely no difficulty. And I think the only gym that gave you some trouble was actually Karina in the last gym battle we had, only because of Machoke and Rock Slide. You know, I was expecting Ramos to have some sort of counter for fire types or, you know, anything like that, boys. But no, this was just a boring vanilla battle with no surprises, not even a toxic setup or anything. Yeah, I feel like the gym leaders in the older games would have had more of a setup going on, too. Joe, you're right. I guess that's another reason why this game is considered so easy, because the AI doesn't try anything unexpected. And now you get to slide yourself all the way down this huge tower tree thing, Joe. Good job on this battle, and I say we should end this episode here, boys. What do you think? Yeah, good idea, Obama. So anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and consider joining the channel if you'd like to support our content. We love making these videos and hope you'll all continue to enjoy them. Yeah, thank you, everyone.
In the next episode, I have absolutely no idea what will happen, and I doubt the other two will either since they haven't played in a long time. So we'll jump right in, and hopefully the next episode will be full of a few surprises and a Sylveon as well, if I can remember to play with it some more. Hello everyone, and welcome to part seven of our Pokemon X and Y playthrough. We hope you've been enjoying the series so far, and it would be great if you all could hit that like and subscribe button and consider becoming a member as it really helps us out. And even if you don't, we're so happy you clicked on this video today, so enjoy. Donald, that intro was on par with mine, so well done, buddy. It had everything from positivity, but still getting to the point as well. See, Joe, you need to do intros like that, bro. Well, sorry, Obama, I haven't had any time to practice my intros in the mirror since all I've been doing the last week and a half was playing with that Eevee so it would evolve into this. Ah, I see you finally got Sylvia and then Joe. And I'm even more unhappy now. It was bad enough that it's pink and then some of our viewers thought I'd feel better about using a shiny one, even though it's blue, which is even worse. But now looking at this Sylveon, it's pink and blue at the same fucking time. Donald, grow the fuck up and stop your blabbering, dude. Either way, you weren't happy, so even if Sylveon had other colored tail thingies, you'd still be unhappy anyway. Oh dear boys, check it out. I can't proceed towards Lumios because apparently the power plant is out. This is Sinnoh all over again, isn't it, when Sunny Shore City lost all its power? Yeah, Game Freak are very lazy when it comes to problem solving. But either way, Joe looks like you need to turn into an engineer now and go to the power plant and see what's up. And by the way, thank you for all the comments in the last episode telling us which Pokemon game was your first. They were lovely to read. Wow, Joe, so it seems Team Flare are the ones causing trouble at the power plant to the surprise of no one. But yeah, to carry on with what Donald was saying, Joe and I actually got to read all the comments this time as well. And it was great to see which games made everyone a fan of Pokemon like us. Yeah, lots of people started with the very first games being red and blue. And then we saw some other people whose first game was Scarlet and Violet. And for them, we apologize deeply. Joe, you can't say that because they might have actually enjoyed those games, even if us three hates them, especially with all the lag and glitches and corrupt game files we had to deal with. Yeah, if you don't know what we're talking about, then check this video's description for our Scarlet and Violet playthrough, which ended rather abruptly thanks to the game being a piece of trash and destroying itself. But it was fun whilst it lasted, I guess. Yeah, anyway, I'd rather go back and talk about this game, Donnie, which actually works LMAO. But yeah, here I am taking on this grunt who's blocking my access to the power plant. For this Sylveon to even be considered worthy to me, Joe, it needs way, way better moves. It needs Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam for sure, since those are some OP fairy type moves. Yeah, I'm working on it, Donald, you idiot. I only got Sylveon a couple hours ago, so give me some time. And instead of bitching at me, don't you have another question for our lovely viewers to answer? All right, calm your pants, Joe. And I do actually have another question for our viewers. How many of you have actually completed the Pokedex properly without an action replay or cheats of any kind? And on top of that, leave us a comment if you have a full living Dex too. It would be great to hear how many peeps have managed to do that. Yeah, I don't want to brag, but I actually have got a full living Dex, boys. I may have mentioned it before, but I even have every version of Vivian and Al Creamy too. Yeah, yeah, we know Obama. And if you hadn't noticed, I had actually asked that question to our viewers. And you are, in fact, not a viewer, but a participant in these videos. Well, Donald, by that logic, you could also say our viewers are so-called participants in these videos, too, since you always get them to leave comments, which is, in fact, the definition of participating. Obama, holy hell, please stop being a pedantic little shit. It's so annoying. Okay, well, in other news, if you two haven't noticed in between all your bickering, I did some training with Hone Edge and now can actually use it in battle. And it's super duper strong, too. Yeah, Joe, I'm not that interested right now. And anyway, it's one level off evolving, too, so it's not like Obama and I got to enjoy you using Hone Edge when you were training it. Donald, I actually did you both a massive favor. This Pokemon is the worst to train since its moveset is so crap in the beginning, and all I did was spend time murdering Fletchlings and other Pokemon in the grass. It was a very boring Sunday afternoon, trust me. Well, either way, well done, Joe, for training it up and getting to the same level as the rest of our team. I am so looking forward to getting that Dusk Stone now, and a lovely viewer in the last episode commented on where to find one. The only issue is we get it after the champion battle. 
Obama. I told you like three times now, I'm working on getting Joe one a little earlier than that. So we can actually use AG slash before the last few episodes of this series, which would be pointless by that time. And if anyone has a problem with that, then go away. Donald being nice as ever, I see. But yeah, I agree with you, Donnie. It would be pointless to use AG slash like in the final episode of this series. So if you need to contact your Russian buddies to get a dusk stone much earlier, then go ahead. Yeah, I second what Joe said too, Donald. It would be so dumb if we didn't get to use Aegis Slash before the Elite Four, at least. So I suggest you get that dusk stone as soon as possible. All righty, boys, your wish is my command. One dust stone coming up. And talking of all this, look, our little hone edge is finally evolving. And by the way, how the hell does this Pokemon even work? Like, what even is it? Good question, Donald and I have absolutely no idea, but I think the Pokemon is actually the thing possessing the sword. I don't think the sword is actually the Pokemon, like Yamask isn't the mask or Confragrigus. Well, Hone Edge had an eye on the sword handle, so how comes another sword suddenly appears here like this when it evolves? That doesn't make any sense either. Well, Donald, it evolved into Dublade now, and look, it gained another eye on the other new sword which just randomly appeared out of nowhere. And by the way, guys, how comes this Pokemon barely appeared in the anime? Yeah, I think it appeared once Obama in the Pokemon Master Journey series, but that's about it. Wickstrom of the Elite Four had one, and actually we'll be seeing him a little later on when it's finally time for me to battle them. And I only know about him because of the anime. All right, Joey boy, looks like this place is actually swarming with Team Flare Grunts, like an infestation of them. So I think we're gonna have a lot of battles in this episode. Knowing you, we won't make it to our fifth gym badge after having to deal with all these guys. Yes, we will, Donald, because I really wanna see Clement and I hope Bonnie is there too, <laughs> Wow, been a minute since we got to see Creepy Biden and I thought he actually had vacated permanently, but I guess I was wrong and here he is back again hitting on minors. Hey Obama, cool it, I didn't mean it like that. Bonnie was really funny in the anime and I know for a fact lots of people enjoyed her in the X and Y series. She was all right, Joe, but my favorite friends of Ash was Brock and Dawn, and I'm really sad we'll never see them again. May and Max were also really cool, too. Yeah, May and Max were cool, and I think out of everyone, they had the most screen time, excluding Brock in the anime, since he was basically in every single one up to black and white, where he got a makeover and a name change into Salon Elamao. Yeah, Cy Lan was basically the Brock of the black and white anime series. And look, Joe, these two are admins for Team Flare. They're the whole reason that we're in this shithole to begin with. These two aren't gonna be any trouble for me, Donald. And talking of Brock, I'm quite sad he never got to find anyone in the end. The entire anime was him trying to find a girlfriend, and they did him dirty in the end by making him never get one. OMG, Joe, you're right, and my man was risen every opportunity he could. And I'm pretty sure there were several situations where Brock could have been with someone but instead he decided to stay with Ash. He takes the saying, bros before hoes, to the highest heights. Yeah, Brock was definitely a Riz expert. On par with us three, don't you think, boys? I would happily indoctrinate Brock if that's the right word to use into our little club here, boys. It would be great to have him on board. Hey, look, Donald. Apparently you just wanted to learn the move last resort, but I'm not gonna teach that to you since I don't think it'll be helpful at this point in the game. And anyway, you said you wanted to learn more fairy type moves. Yeah, Joe, listen here, buddy. I already had major issues with you using that Sylveon to begin with, and then you thought it would be funny to name it after me, and now you think you're a fucking comedian by referring to me as that Sylveon. You are really pushing it, bro. Donald, it's obviously not you, is it? I was just teasing you a little bit. What was it you told me way back when we played Pokemon Platinum? You said that a little character building is always good and your friends are the best people to help you out with that. First of all, I'm surprised you actually went and remembered me saying that, Joe. But second of all, turning me into a Pokemon is not what I had in mind when I was talking about character building. This is just bestiality, if anything. Yeah, Donald, you might want to double check your definition of what bestiality is because it's absolutely not what you think, holy hell. But anyway, Joe, well done for sweeping these admins. I think they're a joke and don't deserve the admin title TBH. I agree, Obama. And even some of our viewers agreed that Team Flare is a little shit. The most difficult admins I had to face were the Team Galactic ones. Then I'd say the Team Rocket ones would be second. 
Yeah, especially that final admin battle with Mars and Jupiter atop Spear Pillar. And we had Barry with us too for the double battle and it was still really tough. On top of that, Donald, Cyrus was the worst. Out of all the leaders, he was definitely the toughest. I'm not really sure who to put second, but I've heard Giovanni and Team Rainbow Rocket is also a tough cookie. Yeah, we'll play Ultra Sun and Moon eventually, Joe, since some of our viewers have suggested it. And also, who the hell are these two? They show up wearing Republican and Democrat masks, two boys. Well, Joe and I don't know that guy in the blue Donnie, but I don't care about all that. They just gave us some of the best items in the game being full restores. Although in other games, we'd probably need them way more than in this one. Okay, boys, all the shenanigans in the power plant has been dealt with thanks to yours truly, and I think this just shows what a great president I am as well as a Pokemon trainer. I'm like Alexander the Great. I charge head on right at the front of all my troops instead of others who hide at the back like a bunch of fucking pussies. Joe, if you're Alexander the Great, then I'm Julius Caesar. All right, you two steady on. Comparing yourself to Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar is probably the most ridiculous things I've heard you both ever say. The only Caesar you're related to, Donald, is a Caesar salad from Wendy's LM Faust shots fired right there by me. Joe, you are so lucky we're getting interrupted by this cutscene here from this literal titan who looks like a homeless person. Who the hell was that, boys? He looked really scary. And he was talking to himself about some flower Pokemon. What does all this mean? Well, Joe, that guy is a pivotal person in this game's story, as well as Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphires, too, actually. But I won't say more than that, so as to not spoil it for you, at least right now, unless you piss me off. Fair enough, Obama. I hate spoilers ever since Donald spoiled Endgame for me. But anyway, here we are back in Lumio City for the second time now, I think. And look who decided to show up with us. Yeah, Joe, you can't explore the city or anything until you go with Shauna and watch the Lumios Tower lights light up. And by the way, I mean no offense to any people from France watching this, but this tower is way better than the one in Paris. Well, the lights are definitely better on Lumios Tower Donald. And who remembers when Ash jumped off this in the anime to save his Pikachu? That was some mad shit there, and that was like the second episode of the X and Y series, too. Hey boys, look, it's Clement and Bonnie. I'm super glad they're both here together like this. Yeah, Clement is meant to be some sort of Einstein genius fellow Joe, and he basically built Lumios Tower as well as that power plant, too. Basically, without him, Lumios wouldn't be what it is. You say that Donald, but most of his experiments or inventions blew up and didn't last more than three seconds. And somehow he designed and built all of this when he's only like 12 years old. They really love child labor in the Pokemon series, don't they? Holy hell. Okay, Obama, but didn't you just see how pretty that tower looked? With all those white lights and beacons on it, I bet you could see Lumios Tower from any part of the Kalos region. Joe, you can enjoy the view after you've beaten Clement since he just so happens to be the fifth gym leader in this game and region. He's an electric type user, so what's your plan for this? We don't have anything effective against electric, just so you remember. Don't worry, Donald, we have a solid team, and I'm sure Greninja will do a lot of damage in here, since it has the protein ability, which means electric types won't be effective if I use a move that isn't water. See that some big brain strats right there? Okay then, Joe, you'll need that big brain of yours to get to battle Claymont because Bonnie is playing Quizmaster with you and you'll need to answer her questions correctly to be able to proceed to the next level of the tower. Wow, this quiz is so easy, boys. She just wants me to guess what Pokemon is what. Well, this first one is definitely a Pikachu and if I got that wrong, I'd have banned myself from playing for eternity. Oh God, the trainers in the gym only have one Pokemon each which could mean that we'll have to do six questions in total, Joe. And if you get any wrong, that means we'll have to do two battles on one floor. So please don't fuck this up. Okay, yeah, that's quite bad, not gonna lie. Joe, don't get any wrong, although these questions should be fairly simple. Also, Donald, you didn't take into account that some trainers might have more than one Pokemon for us to battle too. Well, this Dedenna should be easy enough to take out. And I think this is the first time we've come across this Pokemon in this region. At least, boys. Bonnie had one of these in the anime, and it's a new Pokemon introduced in Kalos. It's also a fairy type, too, I think. Yeah, it's super cute, and I love it, Donald, although I'm not sure I'd want to use one, and even if I did, I know you wouldn't let me. One fairy type is bad enough for us to use on our team, Joe, at least in my view, which you two don't care about anyway, but at least Deedon A isn't pink. That would really piss me off. 
All righty, Joe, you got the first question right, so that's a good start. Let's try keep this momentum up, buddy. Bonnie's questions will definitely get more difficult the higher we go up. Okay, Joe, in this question, you got to work out which one Vivian is out of these three moth and butterfly Pokemon. This should be easy enough since we've battled Vivian before. Easy peasy, Donald. Vivian is in number two. The first Pokemon was a Beautifly, if I'm right in saying, and the third Pokemon was Muthum. See how much I've learned about Pokemon since we started playing it together back in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Yeah, I agree with that, Joe. You've definitely learned a lot about Pokemon since you started playing with Donald and I. And that's of the reasons we made you play so much, so you'd gain some experience and learn by yourself instead of relying on us all the time. And he still goes and makes stupid decisions now and then, Obama, but I guess that's just Joe for us. And also, we made a quick cut here since there was a bunch of questions Bonnie asked us, but for the sake of time and getting this video out, we only included two of her questions. Yeah, there were so many questions, and we thought the gym battle would be the most interesting thing for us to do. But anyway, I did manage to answer them all correctly. And the trainers in the gym were super easy to take on as well. And that was the last question, Joe, which means we finally get to take on our buddy Clement here. And I wonder if he'll have the same team as he did in the anime. I can't remember to be honest. You know what's ironic, Donald? Clement caught a bundle bee in the anime, which is a ground type, and he's an electric type user. I just thought that was a bit funny that they did that. And he even caught a Luxray, too. Well, it was a Shinx to begin with Obama, and then he caught it as a Luxio. That was actually his first Pokemon he met, too but he didn't catch it until way later on. Oh look, Donald, he's sending out one of your favorite Pokemon from our black and white series, LMFAO. This thing gave you so much trouble back then. Oh my fucking God, it's a Molga again. Please kill it without hesitation and remorse, Joe. I hate this thing with a passion. The little shit kept using Volt Switch in Elisa's gym and it drove me mad. Luckily for you, Donald, our Greninja is so goddamn strong, it just one-shots everything in its path. And Joe taught it Dark Pulse off screen as well, so it's even more OP. We just need Ice Beam now, I think. Hey, they've definitely changed Clement's team since you two said he had a Luxray. And in the anime, he never had an Amolga. He did have Magneton here, though, Joe, and this stupid Pokemon has the sturdy ability. And if you all know me well, you know I hate this ability with a passion. It's just the most infuriating thing ever. This Magneton should have died, but no, it doesn't because of that dumb ability. Wow, so in one turn, Clement used Electric Terrain and also used a Hyper Potion, and then Sturdy got activated again. This is some serious bullshit here. And he went and used another potion, two holy hell boys. Clement is playing so dirty here, and I'm really getting mad. I think the gym leaders only have two Hyper Potions each, Donald, so this is the end for Clement's Magneton now. And it would have been more fun for us if he had a Magnezone anyway. All right, that's two Pokemon down and one left, guys. Wish me luck. And comparing this battle to the other gym leaders, I still think Karina has been the most difficult because of that Machoke. This battle was more annoying than anything else. I know we're higher leveled than his team, but only by four levels. And yet his entire team basically got one shot again, boys. This seems to be a recurring theme with all these gym battles in this game. I mean, the trainers we find out in the wild have been more challenging than the gym leaders. Nice, well done, Joe. You now have five Kalos League gym badges, which means we're more than three quarters of the way through and only have three badges left. Let's see if the next three will actually be challenging for you or not. Hey, he gave me the TM for Thunderbolt, though, Donald. At least we got something worthwhile from this battle. I'll definitely be teaching that to one of our team members. I don't know who can learn it, but yeah, sure, whatever you want, Joe. At the rate you're going, you may as well remove every single move except the HM ones and just use Tackle for the rest of the game. That way it could be more challenging. No, please don't listen to him, Joe. Knowing you, that would end up as a disaster for the whole game and I can't be bothered to go in and clean your mess up if you fuck everything up. I wasn't even listening to what Donald said, Obama. And look, the professor wants us to go to a cafe which Lysander owns. Now this guy is a barista too, and you two don't like him. You shouldn't judge someone if you don't know them, boys. The thing is, Joe, we do know him, and you would too if you bothered to finish the anime with us or played this game 10 years ago when it came out. But anyway, I also see you've changed your clothes. Yeah, when I healed just now, I checked out the changing room and found these inside, Donald. They aren't that great, but I felt a change would be good. And look at this cafe. I thought you'd have liked it, Donald, since it's Republican red all over. 
It may be Republican Red Joe, but Lysander is an absolute maniac and makes me look normal. So, yeah, I really would rather leave now. So how about we call this episode to its end, Obama? All right, Donald, as you wish. We did lots in this episode anyway, so thanks for watching, everyone. And please remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy our content. Oh, I just got a King's Rock. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And in the next episode, we'll be heading towards Laver City, where our next gym battle is going to be. And also, we can look for Gumi, too. Yeah, bye, everyone. Have a great week, and see you all in the next one. All righty, everyone. Welcome back to part eight of our Pokemon X and Y adventure. Hello, my beautiful Today, fans. Today, Joe's going to attempt to make his way to Laver City, where our sixth gym badge is located. And then we'll see what happens from there. So please remember to like and subscribe, everyone. Yeah, today we actually have a lot of things to do, and I hope you all enjoy this episode. The series has gained so much attention, and we're so happy you guys love watching me and the other two morons, I guess, take on Team Flare in the Kalos region. This has to be one of my most favorite playthroughs we've done so far, boys. And I can't believe we're already eight parts in and going to be taking on the sixth gym badge, too. This has gone crazy fast, but saying that we'll most likely do the post-game as well, just for the hell of it. Yeah, that's right, Donald. We'll be doing the post-game mostly because I want to see Looker again, and I can't remember what the post-game even was in this game, so it'll be fun to revisit it after about 10 years. And in other news, we caught the fifth member of our team, and we were going to record it, but it took so long to find that by the time we found it, we were like, fuck this, and Joe managed to catch it in a great ball. Oh, hang on, Donald. What's going on now? Shauna just appeared and then kidnapped me. What is this place she's taking me to? Holy hell, boys, here we are at the scary house. I remember this place was in the anime with that old man and some ghost-looking things, too. This place is super scary, Joe, so I hope you have your big boy pants on. OMG, we're going inside. And I think I just soiled my big boy pants, Donald. I hate haunted houses and places like these. You'll never, ever catch me go into one of these places willingly. I even get scared on Halloween by all the children dressed up. Here's the story, Joe. Look, the camera's even shaking to add to the atmosphere as well. But if I recall in the anime, it was just a Jenger haunter and ghastly messing around, so that could be happening here as well. Hey! Boys, help! I'm really scared! Joe, OMG, shut your mouth. Holy hell, you're such a little baby. Donald, that was the scariest story I have ever heard in my life. This man saw a bunch of faceless men. Can you even believe that? No, Joe. I cannot believe that at all because we're playing a fucking Pokemon game together and none of this is real. And sometimes I wish you'd be a faceless man so I don't have to listen to your pathetic screaming. You know the scariest thing about that whole ordeal was right at the end. That guy wanted us to tip him. I mean seriously? That story didn't even deserve a tip. Okay, well I was shaking so much I pressed no by accident, Obama. I hope we don't get cursed now because we didn't tip him. All right, Joe, how about I change the topic for you, buddy? We just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who's been a part of this channel, old and new. We recently hit 4,000 subscribers and honestly can't believe all the love and support we've been getting from our playthrough. So here's a big thank you from the three of us. Oh yeah, thank you so much, everyone. And as a thank you, we've spent all night working, editing, and writing the script for this video you're watching right now. We usually upload every three to four days, but we felt we owe all of you who support us some love too. So this video is out earlier than normal and is also quite special for us, even if it's just another episode. Well said, Obama. And another way we can say thank you is by doing what I'm gonna do right now. I saw some people in the comments in our last video starting a petition to change the name of one of our Pokemon. So that's what I shall do. Wait, what petition, Joe? I didn't see any petition. I might have to go back through the last video's comments real quick and see what you're on about. Wait, Donald. Don't spoil it for yourself if you don't know what I'm talking about. This will be even more hilarious then. I'm sure you'll love it, maybe. All right, well, you're clearly changing Sylveon's name to something else, Joe. It can't be worse than naming it after me, so I hope to God whatever you name it will be worthwhile. All right, well, this should be good, LMFL. Joe, oh my fucking God, keep my wife's name out of this game. What the fuck, man? Hey, you can blame one of our viewers who started this and also gave me the idea. You know who you are, viewer, and I don't want to put you on blast. Otherwise, Donald will get more pissed off. So instead, I will shout out this guy who gave us a wonderful fact about Floette. Oh yeah, thank you to Henry Ford here for this fact. It was a lovely read. 
And we actually asked you guys to give us some Pokemon facts a couple episodes ago and would love some more. So please comment any, you know, down below and we'll give another shout out in the next episode. But thanks again to Henry here. Okay, well, in other news here, we are in Laver City finally, and I see you've come straight to the Pokeball factory, Joe. I think this is the only place in any region we've seen a factory for making Pokeballs. I wonder how it's done. Uh, since you just asked everyone to give us facts, Obama, it would be great if someone could tell us why an Ultra Ball has a higher catch rate than a Great Ball or Poke Ball, or what mechanism inside the ball allows a Master Ball to never fail a catch. If anyone knows how they work, that would be worthy of a shout out. That would absolutely be worthy of a shout out, actually, Joe. So yes, yeah, someone find that out, but all other facts are still welcome. And now, Joe, it's time to take on the gym with the newest type as well, the fairy type gym. Yeah, this gym is full of really hot supermodels too, Donald. And this chick here is actually a fashion designer, and in the anime they put on a show and it was just a great episode. Now that you told me that, Obama, this is officially my favorite all type gym, and I don't even care that it's all pink. I don't even care anymore, I have become accustomed to it. You know I wanted to do some training with our newest Pokemon, but if I brought it out in here, then it would definitely die like 10 times over. But with the XP share, I guess it'll get up some levels. I don't even think you told everyone what the newest Pokemon to our team even is, Joe. But anyway, the gym leader here has led up with a Pokemon I actually never remember a lot, to be honest. But I do know it got a mega evolution. Yeah, this is Mawil, and it's from the Horn region, Donald. I really like it, and when it got a mega evolution, I feel more people used it since it just got way stronger. But there were so many other Pokemon that deserved one and never got it. Well, it's already giving me trouble with Double Eight Obama, so I'm gonna switch to our Charizard and then mega evolve and crush this thing like a little insect. The fact that she let off with it first means she's not gonna mega evolve it, Joe. So you're just being pathetic now for not being able to take it out with anything but Charizard. If you kept hammering away at it, then Double Eight would have easily won. You're probably right, Donald, but I can't be bothered to sit here for 10 minutes battling one Mawile when she still has two other Pokemon left. And then we have way more things to do in this video, which won't happen if all our time is spent here. I feel like Charizard here is the big brother of all our current party members. We send him out to deal with any Pokemon who's giving our other team members trouble, LMAO. Yeah, that's true, Obama. But wait till we get Eveltal and then that will be the big, big brother to Charizard. In the words of Qui-Gon Jinn, there's always a bigger fish. Okay then, if we follow that logic, Donald, who's the bigger fish to Eveltal then? That guy is literally the Pokemon of destruction. Well, the bigger fish to Eveltal is obviously Pikachu Joe because one 10 million volt thunderbolt from him and Eveltal is one dead boy. Okay, but then who's the bigger, bigger fish Donald? All jokes aside, it's obviously Arceus Obama and no Joe, there is no one and nothing above him. Arceus is the biggest fish of them all. Arceus isn't even technically a fish to begin with, Donald, but whatever. Anyway, look, she has sent out a Mr. Mime here, boys, and I love this Pokemon. Mr. Mime is great, Joe. Ash's one in the anime was OP as hell, but saying all that, I actually love Mr. Rhyme more, and that Pokemon is from Galar. And Leon also had one. I think the way they designed that Pokemon but still kept it roughly the same is really cool. Mr. Rhyme also has a stick to Obama, which makes him even cooler. I think he was based off Charlie Chaplin, too. All righty, you two. She's on her final Pokemon now, and look. She has a Sylveon Donald. It's time we went Sylveon versus Sylveon. I hope Melania here is capable of taking this thing out. Yeah, I still can't believe you went and named it Melania Joe. And now if our Sylveon dies, it's not going to make my wife look very good, is it? You heard it first here, everyone. Donald just admitted that Melania and Sylveon are basically the same thing, LMFAOO. Obama, you know that's not what I meant, you dumbass. And now, Joe, look, you're making this even worse for me by using Double Edge, which does damage to us as well as her Sylveon. You're just making it die faster, if anything, you know. I promise I'm not doing that on purpose, Donald. Our Sylveon, oh, sorry, I mean, Melania here has absolutely the worst moves possible. And as soon as we beat this gym, we get Dazzling Gleam, so I'm just waiting for that. Yeah, Joe, I am really not appreciating this sassy version of you right now. I don't even know how to respond because usually you say something moronic, but you've yet to in this episode. To be fair to him, Donald, our Sylveon basically has all the same moves it got when it was an Eevee, and it's not like it can learn much right now anyway. Although, Joe, it can learn Shadow Ball and we have that TM, so maybe after this battle you should teach it that as well. I will, Obama, thanks for reminding me.
And look, boys, Melania here made a valiant sacrifice towards us getting our sixth gym badge, but sadly, she wasn't strong enough to take out her twin. A moment of silence for Melania, please, everyone. Fuck you, Joe. Okay, now I'll send out Big Brother to one-shot her Sylvian boys, and Donald telling me to F off wasn't very nice, was it? Melania made this battle easier for us by taking out most of the other Sylvians' health. Joe, in the beginning of this battle, you kept going on about not wanting to spend hours in this gym because you have other things to do, and you knew Charizard could have easily one-shot her Sylveon in the first place. So just admit you sent out our one just to take the piss. Yeah, I'm neither confirming nor denying anything, Donald, but anyway, you two should wish me a well done since I just beat the sixth gym in Kalos. And I'm very proud of myself. And you were right, Joe, we got the TM for Dazzling Gleam finally. And I'll say well done on Donald's behalf because I know the poor little baby is probably pouting right now. I'm not pouting Obama. Joe has started this conspiracy against me and he knows he has, but the little shit won't admit it. At least I admit my faults and conspiracies. Only after you've been forced to, Donald. But anyway, look, these two have showed up, guys. Maybe they'll congratulate me on my gym battle win if you want, Donald. The only thing those two care about, Joe, is going to the Pokeball factory. See, even they don't give a shit about your stupid gym battle with Sylveon. No one cares, I tell you, no one. All right, it seems Team Flair has taken over the Pokeball factory. Joe and these two weren't allowed in. So some shit is definitely about to go down here now. Oh, look who finally decided to make an appearance. The little blondie who keeps calling me neighbor when I have a name. Serena in the anime was way better than in this game. Oh, wow, look, Shauna and Trevor are getting chased by that Team Flair, Grunt Joe. Since you love using Melania so much, why don't you go get her to chase after him, dumbass? Actually, Donald, they just did me a favor by getting chased. Now that Grunt has run off, the entrance is clear, which means Serena and I can storm the Pokeball factory and save everyone in it like the hero I am. Wow, look, boys, at all those Pokeballs all piled up there. After we take out all the Grunts in here, I say we poach all those balls. It's not like anyone will notice. I'm down for that Obama. I think a good heist will do me some good after getting very frustrated with our resident fossil here and his stupid nicknames. Great, so this place is basically like the power plant all over again, boys. It's gonna be full of team flare grunts and then I'll also have to solve some puzzles along the way too, isn't it? Basically, yeah, Joe, just like in every other game. But look, these grunts have actually evolved their Pokemon. Before we had to deal with Krogunk, but now we get to battle Toxic Croak. In the other games, all the devs would have done is raise the level of the Pokemon without evolving it. Yeah, they can evolve all they want, Obama. Our double aid here is so OP now that I've trained it up. It's up there as one of the all-time greats for sure. Look, it's trying to learn power trick, Joe. I have no idea what that move does, so can't give you any advice on whether you should teach it to it or not. No, don't worry, Donald. Last night I did some research on the best moves for Aegislash, and I have some ideas now. And a viewer also commented that we can get a Dusk Stone in Terminus Cave before being champion too. All right, cool, Joe. That saves Donald using his phone a friend. And I hope the moves you choose will actually be decent and not your idea of what good moves are. You gotta have more faith in me, Obama. Look, I've made it this far in life, so I think I can handle choosing some moves, bucko. And anyway, look, I've made it to the CEO's office and he's being held hostage by these three clowns. I don't remember that one in the middle being in the anime Obama, although I could be wrong. Or they just added in more characters to the game version. But regardless, looks like you have some more battles against admins now, Joe. What's funny is in this game, the admins don't even get given names, whilst all the other evil team admins had names. And in Team Flare, you had to pay like $5 million to join them as well. And then they take your name away. Yeah, as someone who's made a few bad business decisions in my lifetime, this here is a massive L, so do not ever join Team Flair. They take everything from you, and all you get given back is a prison sentence when they lose. Well, you and Team Flair should have a lot in common then. Donald isn't that right. Ha ha, so fucking funny, Obama, you little goon. Don't piss me off more than Joe already has. All right, Gumi was struggling in this battle a little bit, so Big Brother is back out in full force, ready to destroy this admin clown. And oh yeah, that's the newest member to our team. Although I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in the last episode. In the anime, Ash's Gumi started off being afraid and weak, but then it also turned into a sort of big brother to the rest of his party until Ash ditched the poor thing. Yeah, that was some more bullshit in that series, Obama. He ditches Gudra 
and then ditches Greninja just because both of them were so OP. Like, why the hell did they keep doing that? And then the first Pokemon he did that to was, in fact, Charizard. I think his final team in the Pokemon Ultimate Journey series should have been the strongest Pokemon from each region he went to instead of him catching brand new Pokemon and then suddenly they're able to beat Leon when he had them for way less time than his older Pokemon. Yeah, that pissed me off too, Joe. But then again, he did use Dragonite and Gengar finally, so that made me quite happy at the same time. If he had used Mega Gengar instead of Lucario, though, that would have been just so cool. Ash was always going to be using a Mega Lucario, though, Donald. There's no way they would have had him use another Pokemon. But look, Joe looks like we have a double battle with Serena now, even though I know you could take them both out by yourself. Yeah, once again, she just appears when it's convenient for her. And also, she's chasing that clout, too. I was the one who took out all the other grunts in this factory first, and then solved the puzzle, too. Not her. Hey, Joe, you gotta move Gumi out of first place, since he isn't gonna be doing anything for us now, and it just wastes time when you swap out our Pokemon in the middle of a battle, when time is so precious to you, apparently. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting to do that. Thanks for reminding me, Donald. And also, I'm sending out Melania again, and it's honestly not to piss you off. But Dazzling Gleam can hit two Pokemon at once, and this will save us more time. You know, I think this is the first time I've ever witnessed a Lipard use another move other than Fake Out LMAO. It always uses Fake Out all the damn time, at least in black and white. And it's never going to get the chance to use Fake Out, even if it has it Obama, because Melania here is part of the OP club now, since I taught it Dazzling Gleam. And by the way, I forgot to teach it Shadow Ball, but we can do that later. You know, I'm quite surprised that Manectric survived that Dazzling Gleam attack, Joe. I didn't know its defenses were that good. Wow, Serena's Meowstic actually did something useful and took it out, though, Donald. And she's always leading off with it, too, but usually it's shit. And look, boys, Melania just leveled up to 44. We're making some great progress here, and if you two haven't noticed, I've purposely been avoiding some trainer battles when I can so we don't get too high leveled. Joe, if you're going to keep that name for Sylvian, then please stop calling it Melania constantly. I know you won't change it anyway, but I'm losing my mind here. All right, fine, Donald. I think I've messed with you enough in this episode. But anyway, boys, Serena and I beat the clowns, and they can leave with embarrassment on their faces, knowing that they lost to a bunch of kids. You know, I forgot we get the Master Ball this early in this game. But Joe, do not use it on Eveltal, please. If you do, I will delete the save and make you play the whole thing again. Eveltal will be so easy to catch in an Ultra Ball, but remembers there's that special Pokemon we can use the Master Ball on later. Okay, thanks for reminding me about that Obama, because I was actually going to use the Master Ball on Eveltal. And as much as I love this game, I refuse to play it all again, at least for a few years. Oh, the whole gang is back here, guys. And wait a sec, because Serena is going to show up and take all the credit for clearing this place out. I bet just watch. Nah, the credit is being spread around everyone, Donald. If Shauna didn't distract the guard in the first place, then we wouldn't have got in the factory. Yeah, whatever you say, Obama. But anyways, boys, how about we conclude this episode today? We've been editing and recording all day, and I am very tired now. Likewise, Donald. So thank you for watching, and once again, a big thank you for getting us to 4K. This channel would be nothing without you guys who watch our content. Yeah, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out, and please share the video as well. You can expect part nine to be out in a few days time, so have a good week, everyone. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to part nine of our Pokemon X and I playthrough. If you enjoy this episode, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and we hope you enjoy the show. Yeah, hey everyone, and we're venturing east of Laver City now. If you all remember, in the last episode, I got my sixth gym badge, and now I'm gonna make my way towards Anastar City, where the seventh Kalos region gym badge is located. That's right, everyone welcome back. We took a little break between episodes this time since we uploaded two videos over two days, which was quite tiring, but here we are back again taking over the world. Donald, we're not taking over the world. That's Team Flair's thing, and in the last episode, you told everyone not to join them. So unless you're starting your own evil team, please shut your fatty mouth. Yeah, yeah, I was kidding, Joe. And hey, look, boys, the professor jumped us with his little assistant and was telling you about Iveltal Joe. Apparently, it sleeps for a thousand years, which sounds a lot like you, and then wakes up, destroys everything, and then goes back to sleep. And oh, my, oh. They were also saying how they have no idea where it is, Donald. 
I mean, if we'd misplaced a weapon of mass destruction, I think we'd get impeached. And the professor here has gone and lost his legendary Pokemon. I know seriously what a noob Obama, but don't worry of all the people in Kalos. Joe Biden will be the one to find it and catch it and then use it to destroy the Pokemon League. Okay, boys, look, I've made it to Dendemil Town and there's absolutely fuck all to do here. But Tavor mentioned checking out the ice path, so I'm gonna head straight there and see what's going on. I like how you went back there to the windmill to see the camera change angles, Joe. Small things like that in this game make it super fun to play. I remember it was Gen 5 Pokemon games that introduced those little quirks. The Sky Arrow Bridge in Unova had a bunch of little camera changes, Obama, you're right. And I just swapped out Gumi with Charizard too, guys, since we're gonna encounter a lot of ice types now, I think. Wow, Joe, that was very astute of you. We're literally walking through a snowstorm, so obviously there's gonna be ice types everywhere. It was probably as ice type that used Blizzard and made it snow. Instead of patronizing me as usual, Donald, why don't you shout out the viewer who gave us the most interesting fact, which we asked everyone about in the last episode? I know we received a lot, so tell me who the winner is. Oh yeah, fine, Joe, I forgot about that. Well, we had so many comment us facts again, but the winner absolutely goes to this fellow with this fact, as you can see on the screen right now. He went and researched about pokeball catch rates and specifically why the master ball always has a 100% catch rate. Yeah, feel free to pause the video and read that fact for yourselves. But from his findings, boys, there's basically no real lore explanation to why the Master Ball has a 100% catch rate. He did give the game explanation, but we were more interested in the lore one. It was a great explanation, so thank you for taking the time to do some research on that. And I hope one day the Pokemon Company can come up with an explanation to why the Master Ball is so powerful. He did mention that any Master Balls made are heavily regulated by the Pokemon League, though, for obvious reasons. Yeah, and then they're given to a 10-year-old boy or girl to do with it whatever they like, which is some strange definition of what regulation means. Well, anyway, we got our one, so who gives a fuck, Donald? And to our viewers, our next question is, which gym leader is your favorite and why? Us three all have our favorites, and my one is probably going to be Volkner from Sinnoh. I love his name, first of all, and also his gym is mad. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Volkner Obama. He's up there for me too, but my favorite probably has to be Brock because I love him from the anime. He's one of my favorite anime protagonists, but Satoru Gojo is the GOAT. Joe, you dumbass. Satoru Gojo is not even Pokemon, although he is one of the GOATs and his eyes are mesmerizing. But all that aside, my favorite gym leader has to be Drayden because he uses dragon types and also Iris is awesome too. See, I'm not a misogynist, but Claire can go to hell because she can't take a loss properly. Hey, I'm reading that manga now since I have a lot of downtime and I don't have to watch your court hearings anymore, Donald LMAO. But anyway, those were our favorite gym leader choices, and apart from Donald's, I think we have some great reasons. Obama, what's wrong with my reason? I told you Drayden is the best because he uses dragon types, and I even included Iris too. So what's the issue here, bucko? Donald, you'd vote youngster Joey as the best gym leader if he had a Dragonite on his team, you moron. Basically, all Dragon-type Pokemon are what you simp for, and everyone knows it. I only simp for Arceus Obama, and my favorite type just so happens to be Dragon, so I don't see an issue here. That's my opinion, and that's that. So their end of story now, let's proceed with the game. Yeah, let's proceed, because look, boys, our little Gumi here just evolved into a Sligu. And we do have a nickname from it as requested by a longtime viewer. So in the next episode, I'll change his name to Gumball. Gumball is the perfect name for this little guy. So thank you for that nickname. And luckily he's purple too. So we won't have any political arguments about color boys. Donald, you're the only one out of the three of us who starts the color arguments because you're Mr. Petty Pants. How dare you call me Mr. Petty Pants Obama? What I'm saying is a fact. So just get over it, you fool. And to piss me off even more now, I have to watch Joe fail at these ice puzzles, which are everywhere in this place. Holy hell. That is true, actually. I failed at this twice now and fell down a slope I couldn't get back up. So here we are again. Sorry about that, boys. But this time, I'm 100% confident I know which way to go. Yeah, well, at least Charizard is making up for lost time in here, Joe, by annihilating everything that comes in its way. You know, I must admit, Joe, I am actually starting to like Charizard Y, and I can't believe I said that. Ha 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 ha, I knew he'd change his mind, Obama. See, Joe Biden is victorious. Yeah, 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 Joe don't wear it out, buddy. Charizard X still looks way cooler, you can't deny that, but I agree. Charizard Y does have its place in the world. 
I wish Blastoise and Venusaur got two Mega Evolutions too, though. That would have been more interesting. All three Kanto starters deserve the same treatment, Donald. But of course, it would only be Charizard who gets the most, because it's Charizard. Other than Pikachu, it's the most popular for sure, I bet. And talking of Charizard, Joe, why the hell did you let it die to this fatty throw of all Pokemon? We're super effective against it, not that other way around. Yeah, that was basically Karina all over again, Donald. Her Machoke had Rock Tomb as well, just like this throw. And it's ironic how a flying type lost two battles to a fighting type. But either way, we have Melania here with Dazzling Gleam now. Oh yeah, I forgot that you named the stupid little pink shit after my wife. I am still very unhappy about this development, Joe, just so you know. Well, I can always change its name again, but this time I can name Sylveon to Stormy if you like. How about that Donald LMFAO? Yeah, how about you just play the fucking game, Joe, before you get a slap which will probably shatter your dry, crusty old face? By the way, Joe, that room you were just in had the ice stone which is needed to evolve a Eevee into Glaceon. I really like Glaceon, but ice is quite shit since it has so many weaknesses. Well, now we know where it is in case Donald decides to go ahead and release Sylveon like he did with Tegekis back in Heart Gold the Moron. Nah, Joe, I promise I will never ever release Sylveon. I only won't because once we've used it in this playthrough, I never have to use it again in any other we do. And since we're already getting close to the 8th gym and the Elite Four, that feeling makes me one happy bunny. All right, well, we'll see if that promise of yours actually lasts Donald this whole series. But anyway, Joe, I think we're almost at the end of this dumb cave now. This cave is worse than the ice path in Johto, and that place had better music too. I'm struggling a bit with this puzzle, Obama, but yeah, you're right about the music in the ice path. The only thing I didn't like about the ice path was those strength boulders because they took so much time to move about. Yeah, Johto definitely had the most chores in any region, I feel, Joe. So much cutting, but at least we didn't have to teach Rock Smash to any of our Pokemon. OMG, Joe, you baboon, you're so pathetic at puzzles. Seriously, I would have done this by now if I was playing. Listen here, Obama, it's not my fault my hands and fingers don't work as well as they used to. Like yours can, and also this moving diagonally thing is really difficult to perform when my fingers aren't functioning. Oh, well, 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 looky what we have here, boys. I swear these idiots have been showing up in every episode now since like part five of this series. No other team has made their presence more aware than these guys have. I know, right, Donald. And look, they're bothering this poor Obama Snow. This reminds me of that one we used in our Pokemon Platinum playthrough, boys. I miss that guy, I hope he's doing well. So it seems they wanted to catch this guy to use his energy for something, Obama. I wonder what that means, but either way, I'm gonna stop them now. Yeah, crush them, Joe. Let them feel the full power of our Mega Charizard Y. I wanna see them all burn the losers. How dare they abuse this poor Obama Snow like that? I will, Donald, don't worry. And this will be easy since all they have is gall bats and probably more hound dooms or whatever. And I taught some new moves to our Pokemon as well to make them more well-rounded. Having drought on Mega Charizard Y is so overpowered though, but I love it and also, Joe, a viewer suggested we teach Heat Wave to it as well eventually. It can attack two Pokemon at once in double battles like Sylveon can with Dazzling Gleam. I'm pretty sure fire moves are boosted in power with Drought activated as well, Obama. So yeah, it's hella OP, but totally worth it. And look, Joe, they're sending out Manectric now, so be careful. Yeah, I wasn't expecting them to have a Manectric Donald, but don't worry, I have a counter for this now as well. Charizard is just great in that it can learn so many different types of moves. Okay, well as usual, Team Flare is dead ass easy even for Joe Biden to take out, so now I think you have that admin to deal with. Again, Joe, and also it feels like Team Flare has the most amount of admins in any team in Pokemon. Yeah, no wonder Lysandre is able to fund all his projects when he has a bunch of grunts and even more admins paying millions just to join this dumb company. All right, Joe, it's time to beat this blue-haired weirdo now. And I think we're getting close to the finale of Team Flair's plan, Donald. And then we can get Eveltal and turn everything into stone. Yeah, Obama Oblivion Wing isn't actually like the move in the movie. I think it actually heals us up whilst damaging the opponent, but they don't get turned into stone. Although saying that, it would be cool if they got frozen. I don't know what you two are on about, but Oblivion Wing is a move I really want to use. And I hope Eveltal comes with it, Obama. I remember, Donald, are you saying it's like a giant death ray a few episodes ago? Yeah, it basically is, Joe. To be honest, it's a move that more suits me than you, but either way, I'm just happy I get to see it used after a long time. 
All right, these morons should clear off now, Joe, that you beat them so well done for saving Obama Snow. And I'm sure it's super pleased with you as well. Maybe it'll even give you a certain something. I love gifts, Obama, especially ones from a Pokemon, too. And hey, it was nice to see Trevor actually do something with us other than comparing Pokedexes, you know? Oh, nice, you got the Megastone for Obama Snow Joe. Not that we'll ever use it, but still, that was very sweet of this giant Yeti boy to give us his stone. We should transfer our one from Platinum over here and give the stone to it. No, Donald, the one in Platinum stays in Platinum. So when we go back to that game one day, we'll have all the members of the team there waiting for us. And then I'll take on Cynthia again and crush her this time on my first try like you did in Unova. Oh, hey, Joe, look, this is a really fun part of the game. Um, we get to ride this mammoth swine through the mountain passes, just like Ash and the gang did in the anime. Although this is a really quick route, but it's still a cool feature. Yeah, riding this mammoth swine is like the riding. We got a ride way back in the earlier parts of the game, Joe. It would have been cool to see some other trainers sitting on them, though, because this whole route is super barren, and there's basically nothing here. Well, I think I've already made it to the other side of the pass, Donald. I guess those other stones I could have broken along the way had items behind them, but if there was anything worth getting, then I can come back later. Well, I'm certainly not gonna go back here, Joe, because I really can't be bothered. And the Mammo Swine are super slow, LMAO. But anyway, look, we've made it to the outskirts of Anastar City. Yeah, and Serena wants another battle with you, Joe. This should be good. I wonder if she has a Mega Stone of her own yet. We wanna show you what that Mega Absol will look like. Hey, Obama, this is the town with that giant crystal gemstone thing. I say we remove the Washington Monument, and in its place we find a giant crystal like the one in Anastar City and put it in its place. It would be way cooler, and also a major flex. I'm absolutely down for that, Donnie. That would be the biggest flex ever, and make all the other states jealous that they don't have a giant gemstone of their own. And plus, having it in the capital is just fitting. All righty, you two here, I am healing my Pokemon up, and that assistant lady of Professor Sycamore just gave me some repeat balls, too, which apparently work better on Pokemon we've already caught. That's right, Joe, that is how they work, but I never use them because I've never been in a situation where I've needed to catch the same Pokemon more than once, unless you're Obama and want to make a living Dex like the little nerd he is. But my favorite ball is obviously the luxury ball. Donald, I know for a fact that if you had the chance to make Golden Master Balls, you absolutely would do that, and you call me a nerd. Hey, a Golden Master Ball would be pretty cool, though, Obama, or just a gold ball in general. I'm surprised Kurt, who makes them in Johto, hasn't come up with a recipe for one yet. Or he could just spray paint them. Joe, stop coming up with those ridiculous ideas, will you please, and just focus on this battle. Not that it will be challenging at all. And she's still leading off with this piece of shit meow stick. It seems this episode has all been about Charizard since you've used it a lot, Joe. Big Brother here is helping his companions level up, especially Sligu. Well, Charizard Y is just great Obama. And to be honest, my main reason for using it in this episode, a lot other than the ice cave, was to get Sligu up some levels. I really want to use a Gudra as soon as possible since I've never had the chance to use one. LMFAO Obama, look what Pokemon Serena is sending out next. And it's a male one too, Donald. This is just hilarious. I don't know who to feel sorry more for though. Hey, I did some research on that Vaporeon joke you two keep going on about. And let me tell you, I was very, very disturbed. Why would someone come up with something like that? Trust me, Joe, we asked the same question when Obama and I first found out about it. But anyway, I'm glad you killed it because I also find it disturbing. And the fact Serena has one makes me dislike her very much now. They should have given her a Sylveon for real, though, to keep in a line with the anime plot. The only Pokemon they should have changed is the starter, since that depends on what we pick. But other than that, they've gone and ruined it for me. Obama, it's seriously not that deep, bro. If anything, her team is way stronger in this game than in the anime, especially since you said she'll be able to mega evolve soon. Honestly, Absol is the only thing that makes Serena somewhat bearable in this game, though, Joe. Even if she does get destroyed every single time. Right, we're already down to her last Pokemon Joe, her chestnut again, which is a joke to be honest. Anyway, I think your main focus should be on the up and coming gym battle. And this gym uses psychic types, actually. Yeah, the lady in this gym is the Sabrina wannabe, to be honest, Obama. She has some fortune telling psychic powers, but she's no way on Sabrina's level, in my honest opinion. And Sabrina is way tougher, too. 
Yeah, agreed on that point, Donald. Sabrina is the real psychic user and no one can top her. Even Caitlin, who is the elite four psychic type user, was a cakewalk compared to Sabrina. Well, you say that, Obama, but when I battled her in heart gold, she wasn't that difficult. So we may need to battle her again for the real challenge. Okay, everyone, you may have noticed we finally got some mad new drips for Joe's character here. And basically what happened was we originally intended to take on Olympia in part 10, but this episode ended up being quite short. So here we are, taking on the gym. Yeah, this is all Joe's fault for not recording for long enough, but in between takes, I splurged most of our money on some new clothes we bought from Dendamel Town, I think, and I think we look super dapper now. Yeah, this outfit is awesome, Obama. I love the purple hat the most, but the white trainers also make me feel like a youth again. They look like Converse. Even I agree that these clothes make us look way better, Obama. Now maybe they'll finally let me into that bougie shop in Lumio City. I fucking hate that place so much, seriously. Yeah, I think they still won't let us inside yet, Donald. We need to do more stuff before they let us in, but in the meantime, we can go and check out other stores in each town. And also, Joe, good call swapping in Melania for this gym. OMG, I told you both to stop calling Sylveon Melania. It really makes me uncomfortable, boys, so please, please stop it. Sylveon is perfectly fine. I just want to say, I have absolutely no idea where I'm supposed to be going in this gym, boys. These warp panels are taking me in all different directions, and I'm honestly just guessing. Hey, just go with the flow, Joe. It's no big deal. And anyway, knowing you, you'll probably start using the IGN guide again if you get stuck like you did in every other game you played. The IGN guide is the best, Obama. It even told me what Pokemon are on each route and also what Pokemon and items each trainer has before I battled them. But I didn't use it in this game since you two said it's so easy and you're right. And you gave me shit for calling my Russian buddies Joe and then you go and use that goddamn guide. But anyway, I'll let you off since you haven't used it in this game. Hang on, boys. I think I'm going around in circles. This place looks oddly familiar, and this guy was literally the same guy I battled earlier, but he's got a different Pokemon now. Well, Joe, they obviously want to make the puzzle a little confusing. Otherwise, what's the point? And this is also not the same guy. Whatever, Obama. I'm just happy Sylvian is here slaying everything that comes my way. Teaching Shadow Ball was the best decision I made so far. See what I said earlier about Olympia Obama. I just realized her gym is basically the same as Sabrina's, too, with all these warp panels. This is such a joke. What would you do if Olympia also had an Alakazam Donald? If she did Obama, I swear to Arceus, I'd send every legendary Pokemon on her ass and make them unleash all their signature moves on her at once, especially Judgment. Okay, here I am, boys at Olympia now, and this gym puzzle was way easier to navigate than Sabrina's was. But any who watch me destroy this copycat now. Can't believe Joe is already at the seventh gym, Obama. But here we are, I guess. Let's see how well you do against her, Joe. And even though I took the piss out of her, Olympia might prove to be our most difficult challenge yet. All righty, she's leading off with a Sigilyph Joe, which is a Pokemon we encountered a lot in Unova. But I feel a few Shadow Balls should do the trick here. Wow, it tanked that Shadow Ball quite well, Obama. Looks like we are in for a tough battle indeed, boys. You better not let my wife die here, Joe. Of all the places to say Sylveon is your wife, Donald, Why'd it have to be here in this battle? I'm trying to focus here, you know, and I bet Olympia will use a bunch of hyper potions now as well. Yeah, she's playing super dirty now, Joe. That light screen she set up was to boost her team's special defenses, and our Sylveon is mainly a special attacker, too. I mean, we have bite, but that's doing jack shit here. Well, luckily, we are tanking her psychic attacks here, Obama. See, Donald, your wife is doing an amazing job. And if it wasn't for light screen, then we'd have definitely won by now. The light screen is fair enough, Joe, but the fucking hyper potions is what really pisses me off. I mean, we never use them, and even you have barely used any healing items in this game. So why do the gym leaders have to as well then? In the anime, they never do. I think she heard you. Donald and Olympia went and used another hyper potion again. This could end up being a really, really long battle. One more Shadow Ball should take this stupid flying golem thing out, Obama. And then, after three more turns, that light screen should wear off, which means it'll be smooth sailing for me, chaps. Okay, good stuff there. Joe, but now she's sending out a Slow King. I forgot she had this Pokemon, and it's one we never see much in the game, so I actually like this choice of hers. It's part water type, too, so keep that in mind. Whenever I get the flinch response with Bite, it just feels so good, guys. 
but I take it this slow king has high defense than special defense, which is why it tanked that bite attack so well. And there goes Donald's wife. And Slokin got a critical hit with that psychic attack too, so you can't get mad at Joe for that Donald. Melania did really well there. I damn well can get mad at him, Obama. I just realized we had Night Slash on Doublade all this time and Joe just went and sacrificed my wife when he could have swapped her out. To be fair to Donald, I could have done that, Obama, and I just forgot to actually, but hey, oh look, no damage done really. I took out her second Pokemon and now we're on to her last one. Wow, and it's just a Meowstic Joe and you should be able to deal with this super easily since you've been battling Serena's one all this time. I expect a clean kill here. And of course, this little peasant Pokemon would tank that hit to Obama. I bet Olympia has her Pokemon drugged up because there's no way it should have tanked that hit from Night Slash. And it just took out Dublade now too, Joe. So yeah, this battle is probably our toughest so far. And other than Charizard, this Meowstic is higher leveled than our entire team. Well, when all else fails, boys, we have our Greninja here with Dark Pulse, which will obliterate this stupid cat. See, the moves I chose for our Pokemon allow us to counter all moves just like Arceus's plates. And that's that, boys, our seventh gym badge in the bag. Well done, Joe, and now on to the eighth gym. Donald, I haven't even left this building yet, and you're already raving about the eighth gym badge. Give me a chance to catch my breath, will you, bro? I would have already been at the eighth gym by now if I was playing Joe because I'm just so great and amazing and great okay, and anyway, awesome. Okay, anyway, whilst just Donald goes on about himself, else. we got Calm Mind Joe, which is the same TM that Sabrina also gave us. So yeah, this is a major copycat situation going on here. Hey, I hope our viewers heard how great I am, Obama, before you went to cut me off like that. Trust me, Donald, I'm sure they heard you, and anyway, I can finally leave this place and never have to return to it either. And Serena has showed up again. I'm really getting bored of beating her, so I hope we don't battle now. Oh, look, it's Lysander again, boys. And it looks like he's finally showing his true colors to the world. He's gonna try revive that ultimate weapon thing and wipe everyone who isn't a part of Team Flare out. Well, that got pretty dark, Obama. He's gonna commit mass genocide to all the people who don't follow his ideals, which sounds very, very similar to a certain someone I won't mention. I'm actually in shock, boys. Lysander came across as this really nice looking fellow with his plan to help the Kalos region become a better place. And then it turns out he's just plain evil. I would have even voted for him, you know. Okay, well, on that depressing note, I say we end this episode here, boys. Thank you so much for watching this episode and please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Yeah, thanks for watching everyone. And we created an Instagram and TikTok account. If you guys wanna follow our antics and our overlord, Discommel's antics too, so check out the links in the description for that. Yeah, follow us there, everyone, and in the next episode, I'll be taking on Team Flare's secret base, which is somewhere in Lumio City. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to our Pokemon X and Y playthrough. We're in the double digits now, being this is part 10. But for those of you watching this in the full movie, we hope you've taken a break, drank some water, and also hit that like and subscribe button. Yeah, welcome back everyone. Today Joe's gonna storm Team Flair's base and I think he's still in shock that Lysander was actually the bad guy in Kalos Obama. The moron only just figured that out in the last episode. Well, he did keep going on about making Kalos a better place, Donald, but what he meant was making it a better place for Team Flair and literally killing everyone else off with the ultimate weapon and evil tall. So basically Lysander has two ultimate weapons, doesn't he? He has that ultimate weapon that's powered by dead Pokemon and also Eveltal, who's gonna go around and turn everyone into stone. Well, don't worry, Donald, because Joe fucking Biden here is gonna save the Kalos region and go down in history as the savior of all. He will be forever immortalized. Hey, I'm glad you have so much faith in me, Obama. That really makes me feel good, old buddy, old pal. And why the hell are Team Flair members working as waiters in this Republican cafe? Joe, just because it's red doesn't mean it has anything to do with the Republicans, you dumbass. And anyway, this place was just a front for Team Flair's base, kind of like Team Rocket had with the game corner in the original games, and then again in that little shop in Mahogany Town in the Chodo region. Hey, I stormed the hell out of that place, Donald. It was great fun, and I'll do the same again here, too. I'll wipe everyone out who gets in our way. Well, it's good to see Sylveon here managing to do lots of damage to these grunts Pokemon, Joe. Dazzling Gleam is actually proving to be useful for once. True, Obama, since we haven't battled any dragon types yet, and there aren't even any dragon type gyms in this region too. There is, however, one dragon type Elite Four member. Alrighty, boys, check it out. 
I found the secret password to open the secret door up. This was exactly like Team Rocket's base in Heart Gold, except there isn't a Murkrow to chase. And there he is, boys, the main man himself, the conniving ginger who's going to destroy the whole world. Yeah, looks like we got to battle him now, Joe, so get ready for this one. He might be one tough cookie, or he might end up being a pushover like every other battle in this game so far. Okay, well, his first Pokemon is a Mianfu Obama, and I know this is a fighting type, so I could potentially send out Charizard to deal with his whole team or just spam out Dazzling Gleam with Sylveon. Not worth it to send Charizard out for this battle, Joe, since I was kidding about Lysander being tough for you. All right, good to see my wife here one-shotting everything that comes her way, Joe. It's also a bonus that basically all the Team Flare Grunts have Pokemon that are weak to fairy types. Except this one, Donald. Lysander has sent out a Garados now, and we have no counters for flying types, actually. None of our Pokemon has electric moves, and Greninja's rock move is so weak. All right, Joe, not happy that you got Sylveon killed again. Not gonna lie, but I think this would be a Charizard moment right now, so just send it out. Use Solar Beam and one-shot this blue snake boy. Yeah, sending out Sligu was a dumb move, Joe. You should have expected Gyarados to have a Dragon-type move, and now look what you've done. We won't get it to level 50 now, thanks to your incompetence. To continue with Joe's incompetence, he still hasn't named it Gumball like he said he would. Joe, a viewer requested that, so you better get on with it after this episode or just wait till we evolve it and then nickname it. And Donald, I have so much going on that nicknames have been the last thing on my mind recently, dude. I have been doing all the editing and script writing for you too, as well as me, since you decided to be an ass and not help me. That's called delegating. Joe and Donald and me have delegated you to do all of that work for us as we have other important things to do, like respond to comments and play Super Smash Bros. Sorry to cut you off, Obama, but that was some major bullshit right there. There was no way that Gyarados should have survived a hit from that Mega Charizard. Why? Our Charizard is so OP, so Lysander is clearly using hacks here, boys. Or it just had good stats, Donald, you moron. Not everyone has Russian buddies like you, which you can phone up anytime you like. I'm surprised you haven't done that yet to get a level 100 shiny Arceus. Well, Joe, that may happen at some point in the future. Remember in Platinum, I took out the Elite Four with Arceus for fun. But since then, no other Elite Four has been worthy to battle me with Arceus. Hey, Donald. Why don't we talk about all the comments we received in the last video from our viewers telling us who their favorite gym leaders are. We got so many comments, so thank you for that. Oh, hell yeah, Obama, we got so many comments. It was great to read. I even forgot some of the gym leaders our viewers commented about even existed since they're so forgetful. But anyway, for this video, please comment down below what your dream team would be. Yeah, we'd love to know your dream team of six Pokemon you'd take to all the regions and battle with. Donald's would obviously be Arceus, and then a five other overpowered legendaries. By the way, good job for beating Lysander there, Joe. The idiot probably didn't expect that, but looks like he's gonna let you explore more of his base now, which means more Team Flare battles. And you're absolutely right about me having the strongest legendaries on my team too. I'll tell you what my dream team would be in a sec, Joe, but first you gotta find the key to that elevator Lysander just walked into. He said some scientists around here might have it, and my dream team would be Charizard, Melodic, Metagross, Dragonite, Dragapult, and probably Gengar. I have no idea what my dream team would be, Obama. There's over a thousand Pokemon now, and it's just so overwhelming. I guess that's the reason they stopped putting the national decks in the games after Sword and Shield. Joe removing the national decks was one of the dumbest decisions they made seriously. Imagine how fun it would have been to complete a Pokedex with a 1,000 Pokemon in it, and you could even create a living decks from that too. Yeah, when it came out that the national decks wasn't in Sword and Shield, I think that caused quite a commotion within the Pokemon community, which is valid to be fair. And that was before the Pokedex even had 1,000 Pokemon in it. Well, I would probably be dead by the time I tried to complete a Pokedex with a 1,000 Pokemon in it, Obama. And it was my birthday the other day, too. And you two didn't even wish me happy birthday. Oh yeah, happy birthday, old buddy, old pal. Congratulations on another lap around the sun. Here's to many more years of us playing Pokemon together. Yeah, what Donald said, Joe, congrats and all that, but at your age, who actually cares about birthdays? You have more important things to do than celebrate anyway, like recording my videos and script writing to finish off. 
This series is almost coming to an end, you know. That's true, Obama. This series is coming to an end since we only have one more gym battle left. And then it's just the Elite Four and champion remaining. Wow. So even on my birthday, you two won't even give me a day off from doing your work for you. And all you two do is spend your time replying to comments and giving everyone little heart icons, and I don't even get the chance to do any of that. Oh, look, Obama, these two have stormed the place like Joe has, and they got way farther than he did, too. We should have just let them deal with all the team flare grunts in here and then run in right at the end to take credit for everything. LML. Donald, I know you heard what I said, and you're just pretending to ignore me. I refuse to do any work on my birthday, so fuck you. Wow, Joe Biden is actually standing up for himself for once. Look at that, he's growing up. All right, fine, Joe. Just this once, we'll let you reply to comments and give people the heart icon, but only for today. So don't push it, bro. It's not even that big of a deal, Joe. And anyway, it's your turn to play. And since that's the case, it's only fair that you do more work than Donald and I. Well, that's bullshit right there, Obama. Because when you two were playing, you still made me do everything. So how is that even fair at all? You're both just gaslighting me now. Wow, he actually remembered that Donald holy hell. But either way, Joe, we're giving you the day off for today. But after your birthday is over, it's going to be business as usual, all right, buddy? You know, these Team Flare grunts have basically the same Pokemon as Team Magma did Obama. And they're both about that fire life, so that's convenient, isn't it? Well, they're only Pokemon that's the same Donald as Mightyena. And anyway, Team Magma would stomp Team Flare if they went to war with each other. But who do you think would win a battle between Gruden and Iveltal? That would be an interesting battle, Obama. But I think Iveltal generally has the upper hand since it can fly. But saying that, Primal Gruden is OP as hell, too. So I'm not sure. I mean, if I was Iveltal, I would just fly as high as possible and send my death ray until Groudon turns into stone. I don't think Oblivion Wing would work against Groudon Donald because it lives in volcanoes and gets all that magma on its body, which then turns into stone. And Groudon can wake up from that whenever it likes, so Iveltal would be the one to get crushed, I think. Joe, that is such a dumb point, you fool. Iveltal's Oblivion Wing turning things into stone isn't the same as magma. Remember in the movie we watched when Ash's Pikachu got turned into stone and only Xerneas could free it? Donald, you actually just compared Groudon getting turned into stone with a Pikachu, and apparently I'm the fool. You do realize Xerneas would also get wrecked by Groudon. Groudon could take on Xerneas and Iveltal at the same time. Well, that is the biggest load of bullshit I've heard from this entire series so far, Joe. You actually just said Gruden could take on Iveltal and Xerneas at the same time, which is just not possible. Actually, it is possible because all Groudon would have to do is turn the entire ground into lava and then Xerneas would melt and Iveltal would eventually have to land since it can't fly forever, resulting in it also getting melted to death like Anakin did on Mustafar. I win you lose, so there, Donny boy. Joe, you haven't won anything, you dumbass. Your logic is so unbelievably flawed that it's pointless arguing with a fool like you. I hope you two are done fighting because I think we're getting close to the end of this shithole. And I don't think either Groudon or Iveltal would win anyway, boys. The real winners are the friends we made along the way, or whatever they're saying is. I suggest you stay out of this fight, Obama, for your own good. And I will come back in the next episode or whenever with some major points to counter you, Joe. I will not accept another loss from Joe Biden of all people. Keep telling yourself that, Donald. You know this was my W and your L. And anyway, I think this is the last admin we have to deal with, boys. I just want to say, Joe, that I don't think this is even their main base. This is just a little side base that Lysander has. I'm pretty sure the other one is in Geosenge Town, remember? Yeah, they, they built a door into one of those stones. Obama and that grunt ran off into it when we were there. I actually do remember what's going on there, but I won't spoil it for Joe because I'm the bigger person here. And even though he's pissed me off, I'm still a good friend. Well, you're definitely the biggest person here, Donald. That's for sure, El Mao. But yeah, I remember that grunt, and looks like I'll be the one to storm that place too, boys. They should hire me as a member of SEAL Team 6 when my term comes to an end with all the storming of secret bases I've been doing lately. Joe, you wouldn't even make it past basic training, so how about we stick to you storming virtual secret bases for now? A man can dream, can't he, Obama? Stop taking that away from me, but anyway, you're probably right. The arthritis in my fingers caused me so much pain every time I push these buttons to play the game.
All right, well, that concludes that battle, Joe, and I hope to God we have no more stupid admin battles from now on either. They're so trash that it's a complete waste of my time even watching Joe take them on. I have better things to be doing here seriously. Calm your pants down, Donald. He got the elevator key, didn't he? And I don't think there's any more battles for now either. I don't blame you, though. I really want to leave this place and just go catch Yveltal. I hate this puzzle, boys. It makes me super dizzy watching our character go around in circles every time he steps on these blue arrows. It gives me a headache. Joe, you're such a weirdo. You know that, right? Now get your ass down that elevator so we can go after Lysander and see what evil he's up to this time around. You know, for someone who's meant to be the leader of Team Flare, Lysander isn't as threatening as some of the other evil leaders I've had to deal with boys. Cyrus was definitely the scariest out of them all. Joe, shut your mouth. It's story time. Now look! Whoa, holy hell, boys, that giant homeless person was just imprisoned there, and now he's telling me a story. What on earth is this all about? This Joe is the ancient king guy from 3,000 years ago, and his name is AZ. Basically, he's immortal and walks the earth looking for his Pokemon, which is that Floet. Wow. So that was the war that everyone kept going on about. Lots of Pokemon took part in it, and somehow this king dude was involved, right, Obama? Yeah, that's right, Joe. But to stop the war, AZ built the ultimate weapon, which Lysander wants to get his hands on. And that weapon uses Pokemon as fuel, I think, and then he uses it to end the war. Well, you forgot this part, Donald, because his Floet died. And that's what caused him to build the weapon, since he wanted to try revive it. Oh, yeah, so this guy wanted to play God, now pretty much Joe. I'm surprised Arceus didn't get involved with that war, too, guys. Surely he would have stepped in and just nuked them all to hell. Well, to be fair, Donald, AZ's weapon is basically a nuke in of itself, so there was no need for Arceus to do anything. And anyway, remember from the Arceus Chronicles special anime movie, he only steps in when it's really necessary. I would have thought a huge war like this would have been the perfect place for him to step in, though, Obama. All these poor Pokemon battling for real and actually killing each other instead of just getting knocked out is so sad. It brings tears to my old eyes. Well, you both call me Mr. Petty Pants, but talk about holding a grudge. He got his Pokemon back fully revived from the dead, and he's still not happy, so he goes and nukes the planet, basically. Yeah, I mean, look at the size of that fireball, guys. This guy must have been super pissed, but what blows my mind is this guy went and built a machine that revives Pokemon from the dead over 3,000 years ago. And here we are in the modern day not being able to do that. Well, that weapon managed to end the war, Obama. So I guess that's one good thing that came from all that destruction. Yeah, true, Joe. And if you look at that Floet, it's a special one. A viewer commented about this Floet being unique, and I wanted to shout him out, but can't find his comment. So sorry about that. You know who you are, though. Anyway, back to the story, Joe. This Floet up and left AZ because it got mad that he used that weapon to destroy everything. And it was also sad that the weapon that brought so much destruction was the same one used to resurrect it. Hey, look at all those Pokemon stuck in stone, boys. Eveltal must have had something to do with this ultimate weapon if they're all looking like that. I don't think he actually did, Joe, but regardless, that's the end of the story. And Lysander has him imprisoned here because he wants the key that unlocks the weapon and you need to stop him, Joe. He has the key around his neck, though, Donald. That doesn't seem like a very clever place to put it when you've been captured. Z is actually doing us a favor though, Joe. He's telling us to stop the activation of the weapon at all costs. Otherwise, we'll have to endure what he has for the last 3,000 years. As fun as it would be to become immortal, I wouldn't want that. Imagine having to say goodbye to everyone you love all the time. Yeah, I wouldn't want that either, Obama. That sounds like a pretty sad life at the end of the day. You'd outlive your kids and grandkids and great grandkids. All right, Joe, this is Lysander's chambers, apparently, and I bet he won't even have a bed in this place. Also, there's no sunlight here either, so I bet these fools aren't even getting enough vitamin D. Oh, look, it's that Jeff Bezos guy, boys. This is that mad scientist guy who's pretty scary with the kind of experiments he does, Joe. He could put the CIA out of business. LMFAO, but anyway, this dude was definitely in the anime, and I think we're going to have to battle him. Hey, I'll crush this guy like all the other admins, Obama. I don't care if he's some super scary scientist. With Charizard on our side, we shall conquer all. Well, hang on now. Fair play to him for actually using a crowbat, though, guys. 
He's the first and only person in this game who's gone and evolved a goal bat to make the battle somewhat challenging. Just because he's using crow bat doesn't automatically mean this battle will be more challenging Donald. This game is still a walk in the park and was designed to be easier, remember? Yeah, I guess you're right, Obama, and he only has a team of two Pokemon on him anyways. But still, I was just happy to see someone fully evolve their Pokemon, unlike Ash, who refused to do that for some reason. It would have been nice for Ash to fully evolve all his Pokemon Donald. But they made him not do that, so there was more variety among his team and so that he had a reason for not being so overpowered. Because if you look at his Ultimate Journeys team, they're all fully evolved. Oh, look, boys, Jeff Bezos is sending out Malamar now. I remember in the anime that this Pokemon tried to take over the world using its psychic powers for mind control or something. Now this is a Pokemon which could be considered evil and I have no clue what Arceus was thinking with this one. Well, it died in one shot, Obama. So good luck to it if it tries to take over the world again. And the funny thing about that Pokemon is that to evolve it, you had to hold the console upside down. I remember that, Donald, it was pretty funny, but I think we should end this episode here now, boys, because as you can see before us, there is a red button and a blue button, and you know what that means, don't you? Yeah, it means the next episode is gonna start with a fight. But anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, and please remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, everyone, and have a great rest of your week, and follow us on Instagram and TikTok, too, by clicking the links in the description. See you soon.